Hello, uh, and uh, well, welcome to dogs Power Play, complete with dogs. Yes, um, I'm Rick Bud, usually your game master, um, but but not for tonight. Uh, it, you'll see, you'll see what's going on. Um, so uh, yeah, these uh, four incredible uh, people you see here today um, are uh, Sam Delev, typically our Cadrax Eversinger, Omar Jam, usually our Vion Vigor, Caitlin Bruder, um, uh, typically our Benny Beckett, and uh, Bizelda, typically our Ulez Galley. But tonight we are not playing regular power play um, because uh, during our last charity game, Super Villains of Port Ruby, y'all unlocked uh, our Thirsty Sword Lesbians one shot, GM'd by the spectacular Bizelda. Um, and that's what we are doing tonight. So B will be sliding into the GM chair soon enough. Um, first, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, take you through the announcements and do a couple other quick things. Um, so first, I want to, as usual, throw out special thanks to Jake and Lauren and the mods and everyone at Q Times. Um, thank you for uh, making everything we do here possible, like the charity games that unlock this. Um, and uh, your subs and your bits uh, help support Q Times. And usually, uh, your donations to the tip jar help support the show and the people you see on screen. But tonight, uh, there is no tip jar. Uh, this one is on us. Um, Y'all have taken such good care of us over the run of the show, and you unlocked us during the charity game uh, that uh, we are doing this on the arm, as they say. Um, and uh, lore drop and everything. Um, and stay, stick around. There will be a lore drop, even though there are no tears. Um, and uh, if you want uh, to still support us, you can support us uh, by liking and commenting on YouTube videos, sharing our tweets, stuff like that, uh, which we, you know, of course, really appreciate, too. And uh, you can get PowerPlay merchandise. There are T-shirts and stickers with uh, Caitlin's incredible character art, both original style and updated. Uh, you can get it at the Q Times uh, Stream Elements Store, where the, they, they won't rip you on NFTs. Um, uh, Jake will put that link into the chat for you. Um, the game we usually play here is uh, Steve Kenson's Icons. But, as I said, tonight we're playing something else. Tonight we're playing Thirsty Sword Lesbians. It is published by the good people at Evil Hat and uh, was designed by April Kit Walsh, who you can find on Twitter, uh, at Gay Spaceship GMs. Uh, go, go give April a follow. Um, and uh, you can follow the show at Powerplay RPG on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Powerplay is also available as a podcast for the podcast and Klein. Check it out wherever fine pods are casted. Uh, and uh, next week is... The premiere of our sixth and final season, the last season of Power Play, starts one week from right now, uh, so please tune in for that. And uh, yeah, that's the announcements. Uh, time for Power Play. So, uh, so previously on Power Play, at the end of our season five finale, Ulez was invited to Golden Gardens by Veronica Murillo to come hang out with the Golden Gardens kids who were planning to watch an old 90s animated series called Suit of Stars uh, on a charged up iPad that they had. Ulez enthusiastically agreed to come with pizza, and uh, they also asked if they could bring Vion along. Uh, Vion at that moment was at home talking with his sister Amira and uh, that's about where we're going to pick up where the detective agency <clears throat> Ulez you just told Veronica you're going to invite Vion pick up some pizza head over what do you want to do um I'm probably going to text uh our allies to invite them in this endeavor watching 90s anime has become a bit of a thing for uh Vion and Ulez they want to share this so Vion you get that text from Ulez. You are hanging out with Amira. Um, what do you do? Um, I text back. Uh, that sounds great. What time are you thinking? Um, I look at the time. What time is it right now? Uh, uh, it's, 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 you know, let's say nine at night. Uh, be there at 930 prompt, please. 
Uh, I send a thumbs up emoji and then a robot emoji. Um, and I turn to Amira and I say, all right, sis, seems like you're having a little bit of a tough time. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to hang out with some pretty cool kids. And we're going to watch a really rad anime. And if you have the instinct of saying, um, no, I'm busy tonight, or maybe not, I'll let you go. Uh, I'm putting my foot down. This is sort of a brotherly intervention. You're going to come watch some 90s anime. There is no better cure for sorting stuff out in your head than 90s anime. So and, and Amir is like, 90s anime? It, is it sort of stars? I realize at this point I have um, overpitched the cell. <laughs> Uh, it is. I should have just told you what we were going to watch. Uh, here's a to-go cup. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, I'm so in! And the two of you head out. Cadrax, you also uh, get that text. Um, when we last left you, you were hanging with Abigail and uh, Keith Sutton uh, watching Guytons and Dolls, uh, when, and, and that is what you are doing when that text rolls in. At the moment... The intern is performing a medically inaccurate appendectomy in the elevator. I am currently busy explaining to Dr. Sutton why this appendectomy in an elevator is medically inaccurate. This will take some time. Apologies. Dr. Sutton's like, look, I believe you. I'm just saying that if I was ha having my appendix burst in an elevator, I would want someone to try this. Um, you should at least attempt to sterilize the area. This is very basic. And using shrapnel as a plate is ill-advised on every level. Um, and as they argue, Benny, you uh, the same text rolls in on your phone. What are you up to? Um, Benny does not receive a text because she has been traveling through time for the last several weeks or something and I don't know how many days passed in for her passage of time but she sure did not get enough sleep she went home and is face down in her mattress snoring loudly she does not get your text and will apologize profusely in the morning <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah Ulez, Vion, Amira um, uh, uh, arrive at um, Golden Gardens uh, Amira I should mention uh, played by Tia Sirkar um, uh, and um you show up at the exact same house where you first met Don Eaglesmith about three weeks earlier on August 27th. Uh, Veronica Murillo, played by Olivia Rodriguez, opens the door. Ulez, Vion! And she looks at Amira and she's like, you! Our ally! Uh, oh, is my, I like yeah. allies. And, yeah, this oh, is my sister. Oh, hi, Vion's sister. And she uh, kind of shakes her hand and it's like oh and you brought pizza okay this is great we were just about to start come on 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 oh yes um, and she leads you into the living room where you see Haley Mast and Lyman Greer and maybe like 15 other teenagers and kind of young adults uh crowded around an iPad that's been set up on a dinner tray and I'm sorry uh, what <laughs> yeah it's just like set up there on a dinner tray and they're all kind of watching it they, they don't they don't have there's no electricity in these old houses uh, can I so. roll gadgets to Put something together that we're not just watching on an Yo, iPad. Yo, I'll help you out. I can like <laughs> relay images through that or something. With like Rick, with our powers combined, Ulis. Yes, yes, we can do this. But this this has Projector to be on the wall. An event. We must project the image onto the t onto the wall. That wall is bare. There is no art. It is simply gray. Actually, you know what, Ulis? Can you um craft something together that can just generate electricity? It might need to be powered somehow. Hmm. Could somebody crank it? Just look like a little. I, I, get, listen, I don't know the ethics about this, but I could a hundred percent create a servant that would do that. That we would call an ally, but that would be their thing, and they love it. You also have electricity control. You can probably like gather static electricity in the air and something like that. If you want to avoid the servant ally um, solution. Um, Again, they love it. I want to be clear. Lori and a hamster wheel. Okay. I'm just saying. They also oh. get to watch TV with us. Uh, Lori is an option. I brought Lori. L yeah. Lori Lorgan? Yeah. 
that and it's sort of uh, um uh, we're, we're gonna say Ula, as you put together that hamster wheel and Lori just kind of jumps on that and just starts uh, you know training just checking its uh, heart rate on its uh, little Lorgian watch oh my god um, and um yeah oh uh oh no! Again, Benny is When the joke's hard. too good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when Rick is too powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we generated lost, too much electricity. We have well, lost the Caitlin. Um, In the meantime, I will teleport back to my place. I'm going to bring a flat screen and a sound system for them to have. Oh my god, you're amazing. That Yeah, and, and as you're setting that up, um, Amira kind of looks around and she's like, who are all these people? And uh, um, Veronica sort of jumps forward and is sort of like, oh, this is our little uh, super collective. Um, uh, and she's like, here, everybody, uh, sh show her what, 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 what you can do. And uh, a few of the kids, you know, start giving out um, uh, power demonstrations. Um, one kid floats in the air. Another uses telekinesis to, to grab a, a slice of pizza. Um uh, one sort of extends his plastic plastic man like arm out to shake hands and things like that. Uh, one by one, the the the, the kids uh, um, uh, demonstrate uh, their powers um, as uh, as Laurie the Lurgeon is sort of running along. Um, uh, the um, there's a little battery meter that I have uh, on the outside, and it'll a little light will go on once the it's been charged up. We still have to maintain the battery, but you know we've got a good like. 20 minutes now. I mean, Lorgen needs the exercise. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Really, well, just exercise. checking on what's going on with our pal. Uh, they, yeah. Okay, Caitlin has lo temporarily lost some internet. Um, well, in the meantime, I guess I can like kind of uh, gesture uh, to, you know, our friends here and uh, tell Amira, you know, um, you have a department dedicated to a superhero activities and superpowered activities and i believe that started with uh, how do we control it how do we monitor it what metrics can we gather and what possible detention services could we use and uh if you don't mind me saying i think that the emerging identity of folks with powers is more of these folks just kids who want to watch anime take it mm -hmm. easy and also be protected and not hunted down for their uniqueness so i'm just saying sis this might be a I don't know. A good place to start again. Yeah, I had no... You knew this was here? Why didn't you tell me? Okay, literally every time I call you, you either don't pick up or you're very busy. <laughs> well, I'm very busy. I work at the mayor's office, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, you work at the mayor. I literally just criticized... I literally just criticized <laughs> the work that you're doing. Hmm. This is... This is the spot, and these are the folks that I think the mayor's office could really benefit. The people of Port Ruby. Could you offer employment for many of these allies of ours? This would be excellent. I think we have a Caitlin. I think I think we might have gotten a Caitlin back. And and she's and, and Amir is, you know, just sort of looking around and sort of like, I am I am going to talk to the mayor first thing on Monday morning and and, and we're we're gonna figure out something to do for these kids. Before I, I, I we had play, uh, might I suggest potential funding for this community as well? Well, she kind of looks around at the condemned housing and she's like, that's that's certainly a possibility. Um, but I don't know. Let me talk to the mayor and, and, and I will certainly, you know, I'm going to I'm going to make this a priority. And okay, then uh, Haley is just like, all right, all right, everyone, come on. Uh, typical suit of stars screening rules apply. You can laugh. You can cheer. But please don't talk during the episode and save all discussion to the end. Uh, everybody ready? And, and the kids yes. kind of all cheer. And uh, uh, Haley starts the show. <laughs> B, do you want to take it from here, everybody? Uh, background? Yes, please. All right. Uh, Jake Overlay. Thank you for keeping track of that. I don't have Twitch open. And we're What's ready. Up? Ah, oh, Rick, I just everybody's really so beautiful. All right. Uh, we see 
a deck. So the intro sequence, um, the camera kind of zooms in onto this uh, uh, flat screen TV that Vion has brought over until the edges, um, the black edges kind of get smaller and smaller. And finally, we see a card of decks. And then they go flying. We see four main characters cast in shadow and a squirrel on top of the shoulder of one of them. Cherry blossoms wipe away the screen. And then we see four students wearing suit. There's a blink of light and they are all mid transformation. And then the scene wipes again and we see the title card, Suit of Stars. Now, previously on Suit of Stars, Robot Runaway, the engineering students have created a microchip that has caused all the robots to run away from campus. They have caused a mischievous ruckus in the city of Neo Port Ruby. From knocked over trash cans and dented cars, it was up to the suit of stars to wrangle these wayward robots. And we see four figures in the streets capturing robots, tall, small, round, rectangle, and throwing them all into a pile to be brought back to school. Now, it is very important that we finish establishing our character before we jump into today's episode. Everybody has taken the time to uh, pick their playbooks, their stats, and their moves. But now we have to do a little bit of relationship building. And I think it might help if I do set the scene a little bit more. It is 9 a.m. in Neo Port Ruby. The sky above is tinged with its natural reds and pinks, and below we see the NPR University. The building is studded with glass windows. Rows and rows and rows of stained and crystalline glass dot the sides of the school. These buildings stand like no other in Neo Port Ruby, with their tall, sleek walls climbing up to over 500 meters. The sprawling campus has five tall structures dedicated to the learning and education of the citizens of Neo Port Ruby. From a bird's eye view, we see the campus, these five towering buildings arranged like uh, the points of a star with smaller structures, fields, and grassy knolls inside. Students speckle the ground below with a variety of people that we all see wearing suits. Neo Port Ruby is a bastion of knowledge, and its university is its pride and joy. It is a city built to create a socialist utopia with core values of restorative justice, constant innovation, and equity for all. But despite that, utopia is an action, not a state of being, and it is a thing that Neo Port Ruby is constantly striving for, so sometimes accidents still happen. Now, this camera zooms in closer, and we see four students settle, or settled on a checkered tablecloth that has been delicately placed on the ground. The gentle March breeze lifts some nearby cherry blossoms through the air. Um, Sam. Could you please describe me, uh, tell me your character name and what playbook, and just give me a little blurb of them in their school outfit. Oh, yeah. So I'm playing Saber Sanderson, and they, uh, and he's the Sun Hand playbook. The Sun Hand uses baking magic, uh, which is why our short king has gingerbread cookies that they are have like on in their mouth right in his mouth right now um but is also foisting them at others uh he has a uh, black blazer black slacks uh no shirt no tie no complications. Um, nothing <laughs> Nothing that could get more crumbs on it, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, tousled hair, kind of oblivious, sweet thing. The really wants you to try this. I think I got some right this time. And I... Uh, uh, help to? Uh, I push them toward Quinn. You hand them to a maybe like five, nine ish uh, student. She's uh, very, very like up, poised upright. Um, she has her hair is like silver uh, and pinned up nicely. Uh, and she wears um, just a, a white shirt, not buttoned all the way and the tie over the uh, over the shoulders, which is 
feels odd in contrast with like how she holds herself um and occasionally you would see like a flicker of like um rainbow light that goes through her form and she says ah you you know i can't actually eat right we've talked about this but you can experience them i guess that's fair and um she'll hold out her hands <laughs> Next to Quinn, uh, we see Callie Cannon. What do you look like? Um, Callie is uh, tall, like maybe like six feet and, you know, sort of, you know, built like Shira. We're talking, you know, this is someone who spends a ton of time working out. Um, just, you know, big kind of cannon style guns <laughs> and um uh except uh you know unlike shira she's she's got like a buzz cut she is you know kind of all business um and uh um she kind of looks down at the cookies and uh just shakes her head and kinda, um <sighs> i don't need that crap sorry Oh my god, we don't even have strings yet. Don't get too emotional. Amari. <laughs> Your uh, friends don't always agree about cookies, but I think they can always agree that you are always there for them. What does Amari look like? Amari Macchiato um, has a, a messy, tussled, coffee brown hair with a streak of cream white uh, and her hair mostly covers her face. And um, she's kind of right now uh, paying attention to like a book that she's reading, um, a nonfiction book. And she's very carefully, she's got the build of like, um, I would say like a professional, like a uh, shot put athlete <laughs> or uh, maybe like a, a heavyweight lifter, um, but has the, tenderness of of uh, uh i don't know like a like a seamstress or or uh maybe someone who um puts gold leaf on like frames uh and it's that kind of attention and uh when there's a little bit of quiet that falls from uh Kat's reaction uh they lift uh their hair a little bit and look up with their uh piercing but yet comforting green eyes and um i'm sorry did uh uh, are we talking about cookies? Did you want some? I oh. really think I got the right amount of butter this time right up in the face. You know, like the... And it's a slow smile. It's just like a very, like, soft landing smile. Of course, Saber. Thank you very much. Uh, and they take a cookie from your hand. Thank you. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> from beneath you, Amari... There is um, a tiny ball of fluff, no larger than a can of pop. Uh, they have fur that on first glance looks kind of like a, a pale pastel blue. But as the sun kind of hits their fur, it shimmers a little bit with like speckles of purple. And they look up at you, Amari, with their tiny little squirrel hands held up for cookie crumbs, little crystalline eyes and a little white star on their forehead. Star glances up at you. Please, please, can I have some cookies? Uh, <laughs> Amari, uh, like, sort of leans down a bit and smiles and gives Star three soft pats on the head. Uh, and they say... Compresses a little. <laughs> have you finished your homework? I don't need to do homework! It's my job to make sure you fight evil! What are you doing eating cookies? Uh, and they lean a little bit closer. I'll give you a cookie after you finish your homework. There's what sounds like angry chittering. <gasps> low, low. And then finally, their little hand sticks out. All right, it's a deal. Uh, Amari reaches into their bag and um, uh, she pulls out a tiny plate uh, that specially carried around for Star and <laughs> breaks off a little, uh, like chunk of crumb and puts it on the plate and kind of slides it over. Uh, the plate is really a, a lovely gesture. Never utilized. 
All right. So now we have a pretty good idea of what these character look characters look like, um, a little bit of a taste of who they are. We have to build a couple of relationships with each other. Quick. And what this means, yes. Uh, the, the back three of us uh, all forgot to say our um, playbook. Which oh my God. Just... <laughs> Sam said true. theirs and then the rest of us forgot. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Queen is ho the Hollow Goddess playbook. <laughs> uh, Kelly? Uh, Kelly is the bloody. Ooh. And Amari is dream mirror. Yes. They're all so good. All the playbooks in this book are amazing. Yeah, it was hard to pick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then you ended up with the bloody. <laughs> the most, like, violent... Somebody has to kill things. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, yes. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right. So everybody, you all have three uh, relationship questions that you can assign to your fellow students, uh, i.e. each other. Um, going in the same order, Saber, why don't you read out your first relationship question? And the answer is who you get one string with. Not hmm. that I... I'm sorry. I put it, I put it in Discord. Are you looking for the document? The I, just a screenshot. Oh, okay. You're I think so I was looking in the room. It's true. <laughs> I think the pup deucers are trying to shout advice to you. So. They really are. I, like I mean, it. look, everyone's a critic. All right. Um, who whom do I most want to impress with my skills? I mean, I feel like. I feel like it has to be Callie based on that scene. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like that's just that's just story juice, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Saber, you have a string on Callie. Um, yeah. You can utilize, or, oh God, this is where I get mixed up. Or is it backwards? No, 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 no. Um, which means if you ever do a relationship string move, um, you can add an extra point if it has something to do with Callie. Just a way to boost some of your stats. Yes. Are we uh, doing all three or are we looping? We're going to do all three. Do you want to just, yeah, I think for yeah. ease of use, if you want to just read them all. Uh, who has the moves you want most? Um, and that's going to be Amari. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and who has grown weary of your hobby hopping? <laughs> uh, hey, um... Hey, Quinn. Aww. I don't look it. Weary has a lot of ways to be interpreted, you know? Oh, and also, <laughs> I mean, look, it, I expect you to believe just as much as I do that this hobby, this interest, this interest will stick. Unlike all of the others that have come before. Wow, this hits close to home. I <laughs> oh, know. Wow. See, I picked the playbook for the soft baking queer, and I I stayed for the personal attack. Oh my goodness, <sighs> Quinn! Uh, everybody's relationships are in the Discord. If you want to go ahead and yes. read yours next. Um. So, Hollow Goddess has. Who reminds you of someone you left behind? Aww. Oh my goodness. Um. Hmm. I'm gonna say Amari. Oh, that'll be interesting to work with. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Who reminds you of someone who abandoned you? Go what Callie. was your past? I don't know. Cool. <laughs> 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 I will go Callie for that one. Okay. And then uh, Saber at would have, who has seen you at your most unhuman? Um, based on specifically, you just gave me the, has, <laughs> if I've seen so through you, seen you through so many of your hobbies, it would suggest that we spend enough time together <laughs> that you may have seen uh, her at, at struggle bits. <laughs> I really love that. You are a very vulnerable character. I look forward to exploring that more. Ah, beautiful. All right, Callie, are you ready? I know you also have really intense questions because you're just an intense character, so I am emotionally prepared. Not intense. I'm just an enthusiastic killer, that's all. <laughs> um, okay, so 
who knows something about you that you've never spoken about to anyone else? Mm. Ooh, I'm going to say um, Quinn. That feels right. I really like that. Um, and the next question is, who knows you better as a protector than they do as a person? Hmm. That really maybe works with like your magical dynamic, you know, when you're not necessarily at school doing educational things, when you are protecting Neo Port Ruby, when you're throwing roses at people. <laughs> um, you know, I, want, I want to look ahead and see what the third question is. Mm -hmm. Who are you scared to be vulnerable with? Ooh, oh, wow, this is tough. Um, right? I'm going to say, everyone. She's uh, Saber is the person who knows me better as a protector than a person. Mm. And Amari is the person I'm scared to be vulnerable with. Why, Gally? <laughs> hey. We'll have plenty of time to get into that. <laughs> as I lift my hair and pierce you with my green eyes. <laughs> oh, uh, and now it is my turn. Yes. Okay. Whose personality or culture is the most dominant in your group? I am going to say Saber. Damn. <laughs> uh, whose fantasies and dreams are the most fun to bring to life? I am going to say Callie. Ah, dreams huh. of murder. Yeah, dreams right. of murder. Yeah, okay. Not the worst. Uh, I mean, I mean, in, in <laughs> no, I don't, I don't really Action. dream of murder. I yeah. <laughs> I've made five seasons of a character of this. Come on, why is this? <laughs> That's a good point. This is power play. <laughs> I, I'm more of like a reluctant killer who just does it because nobody else wants to. So. <laughs> and who seems Fine. least interested in letting you be someone else for them? And that's Quinn. Oh, well, say that question out loud again. Absolutely. <laughs> who seems least interested in letting you be someone else for them? Wild. Quinn. Can you explain the dream mirror playbook a little bit? Because I think it contextualizes that question very nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, and uh, my understanding is that, let me, I guess, let me explain it within the character a little bit. Um, Amari is the barista. When you go into a coffee shop and it's just <laughs> something that's sort of, comes over you it's a very you're going to order the same thing every day and yet when you interact with her there's you sort of lose yourself a little bit um because here's the thing amari could be anyone in fact amari projects that and kind of wants to be anyone that you want the person of your dreams a little bit and so it is sort of a power that Amari is putting out into the universe. And so when you imagine that interaction and that energy and that dynamic, that's not uh, only in your mind. That is something that Amari is training towards uh, as well as having a natural aptitude uh, for that. But for some reason, it kind of just bounces off of Quinn. <laughs> it's probably because light doesn't stick too much it's on Quinn anyways. <laughs> keeps going through you it's weird <laughs> <laughs> um dream mirror also wants to know what everybody else wants so it's a little prickly um and a little bartender in that way <laughs> oh my gosh i'm so in love with that angle all right so please remember that you all now have a string with each other there are heartstring moves that again you can utilize that only once once per character to really just make your relationship moments potentially that much more powerful because we are only rolling 2d6 dice not too dissimilar from icons where we keep the dice simple and uh the rolling easy all right any questions before we jump into it okay we no here's actually what i'm gonna do um there 
is a bit of a ruckus behind you. And you see a crowd of students, all dressed in a variety of suits, uh, pass your little picnic on the ground. And two stragglers from within that horde of students getting ready to go to the next class kind of slows down at this little, um, at your little gathering. There is uh, the international student, as she is often known as. She was from Neo Diamond City, and she's part plant, part human, with green skin, large eyes, and hair like aloe vera. She pulls her green suit a little tighter and leans in while pulling her friend with her. Um, is everybody going to baking class today? We're making panda bread. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Is that made from actual pandas? Oh, heavens no. Oh my, it's just, you, you, when you slice it, there's the face of a pet. Were you not in class yesterday, Callie? I'll, I was there, but I wasn't really listening. In Neo Diamond City, skipping class is really frowned upon. Glad I'm not there. Her partner also gives a little bit of a grumble. Um, pale skin, uh, incredibly transparent um, viewers. Think a la Vion Vigor. Um, known as Thursday, she is the top of the art class. Short black hair, pale expression, or short black hair, pale skin, round glasses with a thick, thick frame. She always kind of looks like she's staring out into space, but she's always listening. She holds on tightly to aloe so she doesn't flutter away a little bit and scoffs. <sighs> Nobody knows actually what happens in Neo Diamond City. So, Callie, you can't even say that. Uh, um, oh, look, we should be getting to class, right? B b baking, panda bread. Aloe nods, her little aloe hair. Uh, flopping a little bit. Yes, let's go now. And the two of them float off. Uh, I turned to the group. Why do you think they were so enthusiastic in making sure we were going to class? It's panda bread. That makes sense. Why, you suspect something? I'm just um, wondering, I guess. And I smile to myself as I slowly pack my bag and like sling it over my shoulder. From the ground, Star holds up uh, their tiny plate. Do you want this back? Thank you. And I actually don't put it back. I hold the bag open for Star to put their plate back. <laughs> Climbs up your leg all the way in, drops the tiny little plate in. All right, well, you kids go to school. I, uh, I'm going to do some research to see. Uh, I've heard some rumors. There was an old lab in the school, and uh, every Mother's Day, there's some rumblings down in the basement. I think something might finally break out today. Is that uh, good? Not on Panda Bread Day. Very true. You focus on the panda bread. I'll focus on my research. Just another typical day in Neoport Ruby. <laughs> Saber, you'll you'll taste test for me, right? Still, you're still good to taste test thing. We're, are we? We're like walking to class. Anytime, yeah, of okay, course. Because the one time I used too much vanilla was um, bad for everybody. You gotta experiment. It's it's iteration. Like these gingerbread cookies. Last time they were too crisp, right? We couldn't quite, um, I almost passed through the tooth on him. But this time, chewy perfection. She's still holding it in her hands. <laughs> Quinn, do you want to partner up okay. for this baking session? Okay, will you be my taste tester? Me? Oh, uh, and uh, uh, I've now run into a little bit of an issue. I don't want to take this away from Saber, so I turn. Uh, <laughs> Saber, uh, were you looking forward to being Quinn's taste tester? No, I think you should absolutely point out which ones you do and don't like. 
Um, okay, I 100% start sweating because I can't get a read on Saber. <laughs> Uh, and that is uh, an anxiety point for me. <laughs> Amari, well, before you take that anxiety point, why don't you roll figure out a person? Okay. When you try to understand a person, you're going to roll with wit. Okay, um, with my wit. Uh, and I'm rolling 2d6 and adding my wit. You got it. Do you want to spend your string uh, with Saber already, or do you want to wait? Oh, I will wait, because uh, we get one string spend per game per character, right? Yes, you can gain more if you become smitten with somebody. Um, you can get strings on them that they can utilize on you. While I um, do not doubt that will happen with a character played by Sam Delev, I will save that uh, for a little bit later. I got an eight. Perfect. So that is a mixed success. You get to ask two questions, but Saber also gets to ask you one. <laughs> no. Um, oh my god, this game. <laughs> what are your feelings towards blank? What do you hope to get from blank? How could I get you to blank? What do you love most? And how would you feel if I blank? Um, okay. Um, Saber, how would you feel if I was uh, Quinn's partner during the baking class? Uh, anxious about my own partner? but not feeling like anything is taken from me. Okay. Um, and uh, Saber, what do you want from Quinn? To ex be able to experience in the love languages I provide. <gasps> Okay, great. No further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Saber, how you also get to ask? Oh, you got it. How could I get you oh. <laughs> to show what you like based on what you like in baking <laughs> class? Um, I think if coffee was involved that is a way that i would be pulled into being a little bit more honest and vulnerable oh i can work with that <laughs> <laughs> and just to clarify um the, are these questions are like do we stop in the hallway and ask each other point blank or is this sort of like above game in a way and then we like integrate those answers into our choices like yes <laughs> Both? Cool. Like an, like an I like the idea like, of like the like whoosh with the lines and like the voiceover sort of slow down yeah. of time. Yeah. You line through it. Yes. Oh my god. Mm. Yes. Okay. Great. 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 That's beautiful. And then the four of you arrive at the massive double doors that take you into the kitchen for the baking class. At the doorway, though, as it can typically probably allow for four people to walk side by side, very accommodating. There is, however, I think, Callie, you feel your shoulder get shoved a little bit, and a tall gentleman walks by you, wearing the traditional suit, no color in his, though. Black and white, black shoes, black hair, white skin, black eyes. Not a lot stands out about this individual, but you all recognize him as... I made a little NPC list as well. <laughs> Lab. Lab is the teaching assistant <laughs> for this class and um, exudes a little bit of um, aggression stomps his way through, knocking over a couple of pans. Some students kind of scream like, hey, that was... He doesn't stop. He finds a chair at the end of the room, pulls out a laptop and begins to type. What would you like to do, Callie? Um, I, I, I am, you know, I, I probably immediately just kind of like grumble at him, but, you know, since he's, you know, just obnoxious as opposed to, you know, actually evil, I, I probably don't do anything about it. Probably just like sit down and, you know, just kind of thinks he's the biggest important guy. Don't tell me I'm get that guy. Just 
Hey, everything all right? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Are we partners for this? Yeah. Is that all right? Plop. <laughs> sure. You hear tapping at the front of the class, and from the doorway that you all entered, steps in. Um, I didn't make this NPC. Hey, Caitlin, what is your favorite uh, land animal? Sloth. <laughs> um, there is a woman that looks like she has been genetically merged with a sloth. She has long dangling sloth arms, not quite as hairy, but it's just, it's the a gentle fur that kind of rests along her limbs. Her face looks a little down. She has a cute little button nose, but most interestingly are her curls that just kind of wave naturally on their own as if being moved by air at all times. She taps her snoth, sloth nails on the digital uh, blackboard. Class, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, uh, um. Thank you all for finally making it to class. It looks like, oh, Callie has shown up. Well, Miss Cannon, <laughs> it's nice that you made your your presence known here. And I probably I sink down into my seat. Uh, Quinn turns and like waves at you as if she didn't walk in with you. It was like, like, oh, hey, welcome. <laughs> as you all know, today is Panda Bread Day. That means you will all be quizzed on your technical knowledge to build bread with panda faces. The expression of the panda is up to you, but I expect them to look scrumptious. And with that, she leads you or leaves you all to your panda bread making. Um, Saber, what does this look like for you? <gasps> oh, they, they, this is their favorite terrain. So it's a <laughs> foosh of the apron and like the apron is on now. They still have their suit, but then it's all of the frilly apron on top of it. Uh, they have gloves they have their whole little kit they have actually a miniature solar oven um <laughs> it, it's their playbook that's their thing um and they are absolutely ready for this in every way may i roll read the room for it yes please <sighs> uh this is my obsession move i have a thing that like I'm really into right now, and it's baking. Um, mm -hmm. And so in keeping with that, uh, when I use this move, it ups my capacity to self-destruct and, you know, hop to a new hobby because this was too much. But in the meantime, I want to know how to impress people with my baking. Oh, uh, no, that gets us into a mixed success. Thank you, bonus. Uh, that's an eight. Nice. I'm just double checking on your sheet where that is. Um, that's in my oh. notes because awesome. uh, I couldn't fit the full text of this obsession room move into it. Perfect. So mixed success. You get to choose one. Yes. Um, so you are in a new environment and you often know how to behave to get just what you want. This is a massive auditorium. There are uh, large tables and stations, uh, very a la like cooking shows. I'm thinking like that, like there's like Netflix shows where they bake things and they have these beautiful stations. There's about 75 of those that have been arranged in this massive room. There are windows all around you that, kept, that let in a lot of natural light. And Sabre, you recognize a couple of the students. You see uh, Aloe and Thursday working together. In the distance, you see the TA clamoring um like hammer style uh at his keyboard and you see the teacher unnamed we'll call her sloth lady i think they're let's just call dr. her sloth. sloth dr sloth thank you and um <laughs> i listened to that 
Um, and Saber, you also see right next to your station at your left is Puck. Puck is the best uh, sports player on the team. They excel at absolutely every sport they have set their mind to. Dark skin, bald hair, piercing eyes that kind of see everything they look at. They often have a large smile on their face and you know them instantly for their loud, obnoxious laugh. Okay, that's a lot of people. But who should I be keeping my eye on, per my read the room question? Um, I would say Aloe and Thursday. All right, they're the ones to beat for in order to impress the teacher. Mm-hmm. And a bit Callie, of a... and the teacher. Mm-hmm. So while, while you're, like, <laughs> shaping the panda's expression, I'm probably, like... Can we make it like more intimidating, like a panda who says like evildoers beware or something like that? When have you ever met an angry panda? Well, just that once. I whirl around. When did you meet an angry panda? Uh, it's a long story. I go back to panda expression. All right, I want a couple rolls from this party first. Now, I think regardless, um, Saber, you're gonna have some massive advantage because you literally have a move called uh, sun hand baking where you bake bread. Yeah. Um, so I would like you to imbue this bread with something. And we're going to see if Callie can make it look intimidating. Oh, Callie, let me double check. <laughs> Your moves are a little bit harder to work with. <laughs> uh, better bundle up. When you give blunt but honest advice, you're going to roll spirit. And we're going to no. see how effective your advice was on the aggression of this meant-to-be-scrumptious panda bear bread. Yeah, maybe like as as Callie's doing it, I'm just uh, sorry. As uh, as Saber's doing it, I'm I'm just sort of like you know, it's like make, make the mouth wider and, and the fangs longer. Um, the fangs and, longer. And, and, right? Yeah. And, and, and have, yeah. you're sure Panda have fangs? Um, just that one, but uh, they were very long. I make uh, one fang <laughs> per uh, instruction. <laughs> so I'm rolling spirit. Snap. Yes, please. Two d six plus spirit. That would be a seven. Okay. Um, so you, um, Saber, you now have another string on Kali to use. Um, and so they may choose one. Oh, or else you give a string to them. Um, so Kali, you could point out a flaw. Uh, or excuse me. Gosh, names are still new to me. Saber, you could point out a flaw you see in Kali's baking decisions um or act contrary to the advice that was given or simply take a string on Callie to be used later i'm gonna take a string to use later Perfect. i think that's as, as i'm like okay and and the eyes redder red you know <gasps> red like 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 we scary panda have, eyes food color what did the panda do to you <sighs> i don't like to talk about it you never do. All right, now let's see what the what kind of bread did we make, Saber? Um, I think we made sugar crust panda bread. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh uh, so for people at home who might not have seen Thirsty Sword Lesbian, uh, you can make many different kinds of bread. This is mechanical bread, um, which means it's crunchy. Uh, <coughs> And so sugar crust bread is soft and fluffy. The scent diminishes feelings of aggression in those that smell it. So not only taking the wind out of um, my competition with the, with the smell, just like taking the fight right out of them, but hopefully any critical feelings that Dr. Sloth might have at the point of evaluation. Wow. That is so <laughs> hecking good. Uh, Thank you for making class. <laughs> yes, yeah. I needed this. I needed this. Um, yeah, and you really didn't take too much advice in the baking of the bread. Like one snaggle tooth that's sharp, meant to be a fang, really just looks like a cute ass snaggle tooth. I think 
I think she's overselling the panda thing, but like. <laughs> I've seen scarier uh, pandas than that, but I guess it's right. This one's well bred. Oh my god. You uh put one table me in down. baking class. Uh do you want me to roll my baking roll, by the way? Oh, yes, please, because either you make it or you can't make it again, right? Yeah, exactly. Um scary. Okay. I know, right? I might not be able to diminish aggression in other people. <laughs> Oh, no, never mind. I'm totally able to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> so the funniest thing, by the way, about Sunhand Baking as a playbook is I use the fight stat. Daring, yeah. What? What is so it? Are you right. punching? Not right. like heart. Baking, they fighting? have a, a negative uh, in like either a zero or a negative one in their like heart stat. Their spirit stat, not super exceptional. They... They fight with bread. You do. You they don't fight with do. bread. They win at bread. 13 says they win at bread. Oh Thir my goodness. Yes. 13. <laughs> yes, at bread. All right. That's all right. <laughs> Quinn, we got this. <laughs> yeah, so over at your station, um, is it any cleaner than Saber and Kelly station? Um, do you think you can compare to Thursday and Aloe? They are their stuff just looks beautiful. It doesn't smell as good as Saber and Kelly's, but whew. Well, I would say Qu Quinn's um, contribution is much more technical. Like she is able to like bring like she can, she knows exactly like how all of the tools work. She can tell you like you know proper like I don't know like pull up a billion recipes or whatever. But like her shit lacks heart like she doesn't have like the like if when someone makes something that they like and they love doing it like you can tell like it's like the love infused where she is just like here are my steps and i know how to do them so like do with that with what you will how does amari uh compliment and or make it worse <laughs> um so you're doing everything right is what you're saying she's trying to <laughs> uh right 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 that's like the angle is doing everything correct mm -hmm. um she's a very the, the precision like there's no like uh like oh yeah just a little bit more because i know it tastes good with a little bit of extra this whatever like no it is she will if she has left her own devices and told to do a task she will do it one 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 <laughs> amazing i'm gonna say this then uh amari um is uh Two things, and then I'll tell you the approach uh, that I have to this um, scenario. Yeah. Uh, the two things are, one, um, Amari, a barista, keeps an immaculate space immaculate. Same oh, as well. Yes. Our, our station is sparkling the it, entire yes. time. Christine, <laughs> not a drop out of place. Uh, the idea is like a workflow is mm -hmm. kind of like the vibe that we're giving off, Quinn. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, the second thing is, and this is kind of piggybacking off of workflow, uh, Amari um, herself is not necessarily like by the book. It is very like get into the vibe of it. People are coming with different Slow, things yeah. and you kind of just like, just kind of like vibe um, with whatever drink is coming through. So I'm not going to step on your toes stylistically in terms there of what you're, no you're going to There is no style. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm not going to uh, step on your toes non-stylistically speaking, um, anti-stylistically speaking, uh, utilitarianly speaking. There you go. Yeah. So what um, I would like to do is actually do a playbook move, if that's okay, B. Yes. I would like to use mimesis. Oh, my God. I was reading that. And I'm like, that's interesting can you, you let the audience know how amazingly cool that is uh mimesis is a move uh, uh as stated in the book when you observe someone for a short time you may ask one of the following questions and i would like to approach someone that i've been observing for a little bit of time dr sloth and uh while quinn you're taking care of the exact assignment oh my god uh in terms of executing a product i would like to go up to find out what sort of uh if there's any flourish or lack of flourish or any particular details uh, because the question i would like to ask dr sloth is what behaviors do you find desirable or endearing the oh gosh let me let me embody dr sloth with their little sloth claws i think it's 
I don't want to say like numbers per se, but precision. Mm. It is precision. When it comes to baking, this is a science. You don't just make a panda bear bread out of dreams. You make it from science and precise numbers. Um, uh, I, this might be a jerk move, but hey, it's a one shot. Let's have some fun mm -hmm. with it. Um, I would like to have a follow up question with Dr. Sloth. This isn't necessarily a move. This is sort of just spinning off of that. Oh. Um, uh, Dr. Sloth. Yes. Were one of us to technically follow all the steps, but in a way sort of recreate the image of a panda, what would your feelings be about that? What? Te technically? If technically the bread was made well, uh -huh. but the image of the panda once you sliced into the bread was a more impressionistic representation. No! Like a scary panda. No! It must no. be scrumptious! That is, it is written in the rubric! Did you not read it? Oh, I I'm sorry, doctor. This is, um, I I'm actually just asking in general. Quinn and I are going to oh. make the most by the book, panda bread possible. But if someone in the class were to make a panda bread that was um, a little different and the panda was sort of like, I don't know, for example, a scary panda. Well, I suppose as long as they were technically sound, they have the, the, the essence of a panda, eyes and nose, a patch and ear. Yeah, I believe that would, that would be a pass. Thank you so much, doctor. Um, and I turn and I start to head back to Quinn, but I take a quick little shortcut where I pop over by Aloe. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and I, <laughs> what am I doing? And I say, <laughs> Making um, <choices. laughs> um, Quinn, uh, Dr. Uh, Slot said to get very creative with this. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were Quinn. Oh. My apologies. Wait. And I turn and I head back to Quinn. No, Amari! Wait, you were just talking to Dr. Sloth. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking. I was going to... I thought you were my, my bread partner, but I can see that you and your partner in your happy relationship, um, and you're probably talking about uh, Neo Diamond was the city? Yeah, Neo Diamond City. It's quite nice there. Nobody's mm. really allowed to talk about what happens there, but it's really nice. Oh yeah. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was simply going to, um, I was trying to give Quinn, my partner, a leg up on what exactly Dr. Sloth is looking for. But since you're not Quinn, my partner, I, I, I shouldn't tell you. Um, Omar, can you, this is a move. I know this is a move. This is ridiculous. Yeah. What's a sabotage role? Are you enticing? I feel like that. Ooh, I guess technically I'm enticing them to information. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right, uh, roll with heart. I would love to. Okay, here we go. Omar seems like such a nice guy, but he's really got the evil inside of him. <laughs> what? Uh, so good. Uh, but I don't necessarily stick the landing. That was a three, and I might have landed us in a lot of trouble, Quinn. <laughs> finally a fail okay so when you fail in pbta you get to mark one experience because you learn from your failures mm. um sometimes character sheets have special things if you fail let me double check our dearest macchiato friend um mm, 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 mm. oh my god you have a bonkers amount of strings Thank you. Oh, that makes sense. That's really, those kind of relationships are important. Um, no, your stuff is only for smitten and figuring out a person. Okay. So you, you start to walk away with that little, little nugget of information dropped. And yes. what? I just, and you hear like the sound of like plant leaves rubbing up against each other. It's whispering. And then there's an explosion. Pots and pans and bread dough and salt and yeast go flying everywhere. Standing once where Thursday was, the young ghost goth girl 
uh-huh. is now an enlarged, uh, almost grotesque version with a red, a face that's red in the cheeks and little, little eyes. What do you mean? She screams. I'm so sorry if that clipped audio. Um, I just let me just move away from my mic. <clears throat> What do you mean he's they're lying to us? And the giant grotesque ghost covered in bread dough starts to rumble towards you with an ominous mist. Amari, what would you like to do? Um <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh first of all, so much regret. <laughs> uh, I am <laughs> You all have swords, by the way, one way or another. Where it comes from, you tell me. Maybe you had it all the time. Maybe you Wonder Woman it, you know? Um, I Okay, here's the thing. I mm-hmm. have a move where I can um, tr- offer emotional support. And I think that that is incredibly immoral, considering I'm the one that upset uh, Thursday. <sighs> Uh, so instead, I'm going to use my move of mimesis, and I ha- have observed Thursday's mm-hmm. reaction, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I am going to ask the question, what words would you use to say, what words, Thursday, um, quick question, what words would you use to say sorry? Some people don't like to hear that word specifically because they think it's hollow and ineffective. Um, uh, some people actually like an apology acknowledged or how they were wronged. Uh, how would you say, I'm sorry? The silence in the classroom is palpable. And then she screams. Yeah, that makes sense. You wrecked my bread! I can't fail this class! Is that, um, I'm sorry, Thursday, is that, is, that's not your answer. That's the reaction, right? Because that wouldn't be how you'd say sorry. That's very specific to this. What? <laughs> this. I would never apologize. Oh, so you, um, you see apologies as weakness? Uh, yes. Oh. Uh, I'm not what? weak. I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost who makes bread. I was supposed to be the best. Well, in that case, uh. You have nothing to apologize for. And I honestly, I do think you're the best. And I go to like pat them on the head a little bit. What did you, do you get to roll Mimesis? No, you just get to No, you don't have to. I get to just ask. Ooh, okay. Um, I'm going to need you to defy some danger, Amari. Okay. Um, Quinn, are you close to Amari still? How, I mean... Unless instructed to leave the station, Quinn was probably still by the station. So how close is ours to theirs? I'd say y'all were in a row. Okay, so then I'm 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 where she left me. <laughs> the ballooned up Thursday starts to collapse, <gasps> and she intends to crush both of your baking stations so Good. nobody can pass. <gasps> I need you both to roll defy danger, unless there is something else. Oh. Um, and to defy danger, uh, we can choose any of our skills. Yes. You need to justify it though. So, um, if you're using like your might, endurance, or courage, it's daring, your swiftness or elegance, it's grace, your charm or social insight, heart, cleverness or knowledge, wit or willpower or metaphysical skill. You tell me what that is. Uh, spirit. Oh, I hate what I'm about to do. Quinn, you should probably go first. (laughs) I've really messed this up. <laughs> I'm so excited. I love it. Um, g- Grace, for sure. Just, just be, run. <laughs> We're going to grab our stuff and run. <laughs> um, um, I'm going to... Uh, <laughs> let's go for this. I hate this. I hate that I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? I would like to make a wit roll. Um, and Ooh. I would like to rely on my knowledge about bread, uh, because right now, um, Thursday is in the process of coming to crush us. And I would like to call upon something that would remind me how dough can collapse, 
uh, because uh, <laughs> Thursday is not fully uh, baked yet. <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you have a friend who's been entirely info dumping to you it's, about it's bread. True. You know, mm-hmm. I got to turn. Yeah. Can, can I, within the system, turn to Saber and like relay that? Like, can like time freeze a little bit in the background? Like yes. it slows down. And I oh, turn absolutely. To Saber. Saber, I've really screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> we see the slow-mo of this giant ghost girl. Um, you know how like you have to let bread proof over time? Like it has to proof up a little bit. And then, but like you knock it down. Is that what it's called? Is it called knocking? It can be. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, so Thursday has now turned into a, 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 a sort of a dough ghost. Uh, not yet a bread ghost, a dough ghost. Is there any way that we could possibly knock Thursday? You could knock Thursday, but I think that would be the yeast of your problems. <laughs> okay, Saber? <laughs> would that, uh, how, would, how would we do that? Wait, uh, what would be the most of our problems then? <laughs> Or the, the mold of our the problems. Mo- I'm not good at puns like you are, moist Saber. Our- the moist I just no, looked at your <laughs> imminent danger baking station. Um, and I look to ours. Have I maybe made a test proof of, anti- of my anti-aggro bread? Oh, absolutely. <gasps> absolutely. I think, Kali, like, Kali, have you tried that bread at all? Can you confirm uh, personally it's pretty anti-aggro? Yeah, I, I I would say I probably would have given it a little bit of a try, even though it is in the shape of a scary panda that probably unnerves me slightly. Well, this is at least the test proof. This is about like making sure I've got the breadening of it right, right? Because like, I mean, or alternatively, be this is the bread and we have we have to make a choice of I turning in the bread would like that hard decision because it just i feels, would that yeah. feels mm-hmm. right but also a choice i would be making for callie yeah ooh callie how do you feel about giving up again time again time is slowed down and saber turns to callie questioning if you want to give up your perfect specimen that would give you a hundred percent to save your friend's crushing bread station, uh, impending crushing. I'd probably like, you know, look to Dr. Sloth and then look over to Amari and then look to Dr. Sloth and look to Amari and I would say, all right, I think our friends need some help from our (laughs) bread. Oh, so both of you are good at it. (laughs) Get it? Need bread? Because it's that's what you, oh, just, just help them. So into your face goes uh, the sugar crust panda bread, Amari. This, Thursday is not a bread. Thursday wants good bread, but Thursday's a person. Person Thursday like a person. And <laughs> you have bread. You have anti aggro um, sugar crust, beautiful, like, <laughs> bread. Light shines down. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, God Ray bread. Uh, painted like still with the sparkles uh, over yeah <laughs> in that moment um I, I i receive the bread thank you saber and i turn and i toss it uh to um quinn because you i'm uh i'm, Who ran I'm away wit. you're the one that's oh, actually doing a grace move that's true oh so like a lineup it goes from saber to Amari, from Amari to Quinn, and Quinn like dives to try to get it under the sniff, yeah. get the little aroma <laughs> yes. air under under Thursday's nose. <laughs> I'm here for that. Um, I think, oh y'all, I'm gonna need one more roll. Mm-hmm. Okay. For whoever wants to do this. Um, I gave them my rolls. They're shaped like pandas. <laughs> I, I might just perish personally. <laughs> I know I set it up, but like uh, I'm gonna expire. I get moldy and just die. <laughs> is, this, is this my role then? Um, yes. I'm just trying to decide oh, if Saber's this is role a that I'm holding. Yes. Fight. Yeah. No, it doesn't feel like a fight. Would it be? Would I do Grace? Like it's an agility to try to like get to to a Thursday before she hits our stations. Defy danger with Grace. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so remind me how so I have my two dice. Plus your grace. Whatever points you got in there. So it's those points go on top of what I roll. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure it wasn't like it. I don't I didn't think it was additional dice, but it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, so that's a ten. Woo! Uh, heck, yes. All right. Um, has this been something extraordinary? I can also, you might learn new information, uh, discover a new opportunity, or gain a string on somebody. Ooh. Okay, so, oh my god, I can't look at chat. There's too many puns in there. <laughs> you, <laughs> you slide oh, down. <laughs> hey, I disagree. They have a wry sense of humor. <laughs> I'm cracked like a cracker. It just, it just crumble me. Don't you do <clears throat> I have nothing. <laughs> Quinn, what does it look like as you save the day? Um, it sounds it, like, because you probably want her to stop falling, mm -hmm. maybe roll over. So yeah, what does that look like? And this is an extraordinary success. I think it's very like, a, like a dramatic setup that ends up like where they do like the action lines and like it takes like three shots or whatever but then like at the like the last cut of it it turns out like she like stepped over like a step stool to like yeah. <laughs> like it was not like so there's this like <laughs> dramatic thing and she ends up getting like like just holds it up like like how she was holding the the gingerbread cookie earlier just like in two hands like up and, like underneath where she's about to fall and then she kind of gets like the whiff and it like pauses and you get the zoom out where they're just like standing there just like two regular people in the middle of the classroom <laughs> giant ghost face quinn's tiny holographic face and then we see those little smell lines just get inhaled through Thursday's nostrils. And as she rolls over, the floor shakes a little bit. I think you're all on like the 30th floor or something. And laying down, you can see her giant ghostly shape start to shrink and shrink and shrink. Quinn says, and did, did it smell good? That was, that was amazing. Well, I don't want to, um, um, fluffy, friendly, calm, soothing. Reminds me of when I was alive. Well, I can't relate to that, but everything else I can imagine. And she's like oh. thinking really hard about those concepts. <laughs> yeah, you're you're not alive. Th th this was kind of. I'm so sorry I freaked out. I just sometimes when people are assholes to me, it's just fight or fight. You know, I the old saying, fight or fight. We could probably split our dough with you if you wanted. You do that, and Thursday looks back, and her partner has disappeared. Ella is no longer there. Well, that's not good. Uh, I could you do that? I, I think I've been abandoned. Oh, oh. Uh, do we? I mean, I don't think there was a size requirement. Quinn would know that. She would have memorized that. Did uh, we have a <laughs> no party of three? <laughs> hmm? uh, yeah. No, that that would be really cool. I. uh... I have this power where I can kind of mold the dough on the inside if it's still a little raw. So if, you're, if your panda looks kind of ugly, I can make them look scrumptious as Dr. Sloth wants. Someone else will have to taste test for me. And then she turns and she's gonna go bring <laughs> the, the sugar bread back to Saber and say, thank you. And then we'll set it back down on their table. <laughs> Did it help? I think so. Nobody got crushed. Which is, Thank I think, a win sure. most days, right? Most days. Most days. From the front of the class, Dr. Sloth, who was slowly moving to rise. Oh, well, it seems you've resolved this without me having to stand up off my chair. Thank you, students. As always, you do well. Now, and she begins to lather on about, um, you know, the requirements and proper etiquette to uphold Neoport Ruby's uh, university standards. And Saber, Quinn, Kelly, and Amari, you all hear that familiar high-pitched squirrel voice that you are all very familiar with. Um, quite literally, you're familiar that you all discovered the day that you touched those cards at the strange tarot cafe there was a deck of cards that you all foolishly played a game of you summoned star the squirrel and since then nothing has ever been the same that voice now says ah uh, star here 
remember those rumors about an underground laboratory that was covered up 50 years ago to the day? Yeah. Well, it looks like something's got out, and, um, it's leaving a trail of wreckage. I'm gonna need some help. Time for us to quit loafing around. How are you all, how are you both so good at that? Hey, you gotta get your buns in gear. How are you still doing it? Autobots roll out. Is that anything to be <laughs> different? Gwen, IP. You're also so good. <laughs> I think on those um, crusty ass puns, um, we are going to take a 10 minute break before things get uh, out of hand. And I'm really, I'm really reaching. I'm really needing for something and I got nothing. <laughs> All right, y'all, we will be back in 10 minutes. Thank you so much. Hello, and welcome back to a special episode of Power Play Presents Thirsty Sword Lesbians, Sue of Stars. I am your temporary and honorary GM, uh, B. Zelda, joined by my fabulous cast. The party have just succeeded in baking bread, stopping an angry temper tantrum ghost, and have now been communicated or contacted by their familiar and animal companion, Star, the tiny squirrel that appeared when they all got their powers. Star has instructed you all to the hallways on the east building. Thankfully, that's the building you're on, but you have to go up a couple floors, uh, 50 floors, give or take. Uh, oh. Would y'all take the elevator or the stairs? I cannot overstate the extent to which, regardless of time, space, or narrative continuity, stairs are bullshit. <laughs> I you guess we this take the is elevator. This also Neo Port Ruby. Um, there's a ramp as next to the stairs as well, separated a little bit because this is the fucking future. Okay, so hear me out. Uh huh. Rail slide. Uh huh. It's fast. It's furious. Uh, uh and we it's can cool. get a little Tokyo drift in there. Um. <laughs> I, yeah, I have words, but you have words. Go go first. If we're going to slide down, could we present our weapons and use those to grind down the rails? Yes. Yeah, like a skateboard. Like. Would that be yeah. the fastest manner in which to do down. this? Okay, yes. So going down 50 flights. Um, this is going to be a defy danger from everybody. I also think this is probably a good moment for a transformation scene. So I think we are going to start our welcome back from the break to Suit of Stars moment with the four of you jostling your way downstairs and everybody's transformation scene. Rick, I see you. Um, will yeah, I don't think have... anybody's watching. I think they're just making bread puns, but okay. Are they still? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have more bread later. Y'all, I Three, you all it's so It's the whole good at playbook. This. You will always have an opportunity. Sun hand baking. I le as I leave the room, I yoink a bunch of baking supplies with me because we were in baking class, so there are tons of supplies, mm -hmm. so it works within the fiction. Mm -hmm. There will be there will be bread. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a bread dead redemption. <sighs> the breadening. I just want you to know that when I run games, I really do it for the players, so just be prepared. Um, your transformation sequence, I want you to roll a Defy Danger. Narrate what your transformation looks like. Tell me what your outfit is and how your card suit is represented on you or your outfit or your sword. Uh, following our turn order... Uh, I don't have people's names up. Oh my god. Saber, go first, please. Yeah, so Saber takes out their Saber um, and they and, and he transforms uh, as he pulls the sword from its sheath in order to slide down. That sword acts as the wipe uh, into the transition where they don't have the apron on anymore and it's like uh those sequin pillows mm -hmm. but as it wipes 
the sequin goes the other way. And so from that black suit, it's into white with a heart in the, uh, as a boutonniere. And in uh, their pocket, you can just see a little bit of baguette poking out. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Ooh. Yep. He is the and first one to start. Yep. Uh, are you a butt slider? Goes. How cool does this look? Uh, I mean, I think the dice tell me how cool it looks, right? Oh my God, yes, please. Oh, I'm not afraid for you or anything. Uh, no, me neither. Never have been, never will be. What um, do you roll with? Look, this is my skill at arms. I have my sword. I would like to roll daring. I'm the first one down these stairs. I'm grinding a sword down a railing. Mm hmm Daring feels righteous. Valid? Oh my god. This is when the music picks up, you know? We get a little bit of like uh It's the theme, but it's the theme back. with electric guitar. Yes. Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Sparks and hearts fly out from behind you and you start to pick up speed. As soon as you land in the scene that I'll describe in a moment, please take plus one forward. Um, and that is just one you can use with any roll within the next scene. What? <laughs> All right, Kali. Our mm. tough bloody warrior. Okay, so I, you know, pull my sword and then sheath it and, and, and sort of take it and I like smash, you know, the end of it down into the ground. And when I do, it's like, it kind of like there's like an explosion of sparks. And when they clear, I'm wearing like this sort of beaten up suit of armor now, like, you know, from all, all the way just up to my neck. And I kind of like pop my arm muscles and it like break they break through the armor on the side so it's like it's just kind of suit of armor but like you know muscle shirt style with like you know bare <laughs> arms and like i've got a tattoo of a club um on 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 my left arm and uh i um do i stay would i would i slide down like 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 them uh would you use your feet because you're in a suit of armor already yeah, maybe. Yeah, okay, I like that. I like that. Um, and uh, I just, right. yeah, I, I sort of grind my way down. Um, so that would probably be like grace daring? or something. Oh, do, daring? Do you okay. Think, do you think you exude swiftness and elegance? You can, you can. It's just not what I imagined by default. No, no, I, I was sort of thinking of it as like agility, but like, um, yeah, okay, daring makes sense, I guess. So uh, that's a nine. Ooh, I get to offer you a hard choice um, or a success with a sacrifice. Um, and there is uh, a sacrifice. You are going to be able to make it down, but this entire building, um, all five buildings, in fact, are surrounded by glass. Um, ooh, like just windows everywhere you look. And as you are sliding down, like on your feet, you're balancing left and right. It looks really cool. There is a clatter and uh, uh, a beige hand uh, that drips something as it smashes through and grabs you and yanks you outside oh, and slams you down. What? We'll resolve that in a moment. Quinn. Hello. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, hi. Um, okay, so Quinn is a hologram. I don't know if I've said that outright yet. Quinn is a hologram. Um, and so she just kind of like from like her front pocket, like just like pulls us around. <laughs> like it just mad materializes <laughs> like out out of her out of her um, front pocket. And I think as it does um, as a hologram, she has been programmed with one look. <laughs> and so her transformation is much more um, subdued i think than the rest of her friends are because this is the only way she can look but Aww. with the magic of this of this uh this, this sword that she pulls out that is also made of hard light um now there there used to be these like occasionally there were like scan lines that would run through her now there is like near constant um like uh these, these these strings of diamonds that kind of like all over kind of like sparkle so it looks like sparkles kind of a thing but um and they're they're mostly in like the warm hues um pinks and oranges but they're every once in a while it'll be like full rainbow and it's not 
hard like on top of her. It's it's like you can kind of see like translucent kind of shimmer through her that's a lot more often in the scan lines. And that's that's what hers is. And she'll kind of like um I think she'll end up uh <laughs> sword tip on the stair mm -hmm. uh and then like put her her uh one foot up near the hilt and then just kind of like slide to the slide yes. down. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. All right. So, I mean, that I would accept um, a stiffness. Yeah, I do, I do grace. For grace, yeah. Let's see what happens. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> I mean, balancing on a sword, it just, <laughs> it's elegant. Okay, here we go. Oh, gosh, that is not even in the, that's not even, come on, give me a roll for real. Okay, that is, oh, my God, I can, 10, that's another 10. Hey, you are able to slide down and much like with uh, Saber, there are diamonds that kind of shoo out of the sparks from your sword and you're able to crash land. Um, take plus one going forward to in the next scene. Excellent. Anything over a 10. All right, Amari. Amari reaches into their pocket and pulls out a sealed bag of coffee. Uh, they use scissors to cut open the bag of coffee and throw the whole beans forward. And the beans themselves sort of like explode in the air. And the shape of the explosion is kind of like a spade um, where they're like splitting in half. And uh, they like explode a little bit more until like it's like a fine dust. And those like the camera pulls back as we see that these this dust is being collected um, into a portafilter that then uh, Amari then um, uh, presses down with a tamper and then spins around, puts it into an espresso machine that suddenly appeared, hits it and extracts uh, a, a shot of espresso into a mug. And then the mug also has a spade on it. Uh, Amari spins again and they throw the espresso out and it forms sort of like a wall of coffee that Amari kind of steps through and does, you remember um, there's like a specific move Rihanna does in the umbrella video where it's like the liquid silver is like going everywhere. Yes. And she kind of kicks, you know what I'm talking about? The, the exact one she <laughs> kicks back and like the liquid like sprays behind her for a mm -hmm. sec. It's like that. And it's like the new outfit that is just like a full on like battle barista outfit. Oh my God. And uh, Amari, uh, and but like there is still this like moving almost sentient uh 2d uh uh river of coffee that is just following the spiral uh ramp as it would go down and uh amari is kind of surfing on that on um I, this is my weapon uh, the, the pair of scissors i used to open the bag to begin with <laughs> <laughs> that was so beautifully weaved in <laughs> Oh my God, I'm reeling. All right, what I what do you think Grace. that would be? I because I, I can't quantify making coffee um, as spirit. Actually, no. Maybe? I, oh. I'll take either or. It's so abstract. I don't have any feelings in any direction. Well, if it helps at all, be uh, they're both the same stat, which is zero. <laughs> okay, let's go spirit. Okay. Your metaphysical skill is manifesting an espresso machine. Um, thank you very much. Uh, that's gonna come out to a tasty, tasty five. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> so, um, not too dissimilar from what happened to Kali. You are um, sliding, grinding your way down on scissors, or your what was the? Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, it doesn't look. It's screechy. Um, any anybody seeing this from like any of the other windows would just not be very impressed. It's like when you watch a, a skater learn how to grind for the first time. You're wobbly, and there's a moment as you are about to fall, um, and uh, that same gooey hand punches through the glass and grabs you, dripping. Uh, that substance and pulling you outside so do i so just to clarify b do i have this beautiful glorious incredible very expensive transformation sequence and then it just sort of smash cuts to me trying to move a little bit on some scissors and then i just get pulled through a window yeah okay 
Welcome to anime. Not even speaking in this group. <laughs> That's great. I'm so glad. <laughs> As I watch this trail of coffee, just continue down without me. Yes! As Quinn and Saber land, the coffee just kind of like drip, drip, drips its way <laughs> down the railing. Uh, but Quinn and Saber have smashed down into the main lobby. Uh, or what did I say? I don't know. Let's make up a number. Floor 13. Floor 13 is known as the... What's a nice humid place? The um, conservatory. Uh, oh, greenhouse. Greenhouse. Butterfly conservatory. It's probably hot in there too. Let's, I'm in the yeah. Let's do butterflies. Yeah, let's bring it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's absolutely an entire class and a study to this, so that's perfect. Um, immediately, you feel your skin start to prickle with sweat, and like that uncomfortable, like thick air hits you but the two of you now stand before aloe in her bright green her you know aloe vera hair and she is cackling <laughs> behind her is a beast made of dough that has been growing and growing and growing entrapped within its um elastic -y, foamy folds is Callie and Amari. Um, there's also somebody else and you can hear their muffled like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, trying to claw their way out. But for now, you see this scene as butterflies and plants. It's very picturesque to contrast the chaos of Aloe and her bread monster. What would you like to do? Um, there's no turn order in this game, so you speak, you go. Just like, uh, bread and butterflies. Ah. I this is an that. offense against baking. Bread is meant to make people happy, and you are using this for chaos. You need to improve your methods. You... <laughs> Just keep making puns at me, and I, I won't stand for it. I found, and she pulls out a playing card. <gasps> it is, I think it is a queen of spades. Oh, come on. <laughs> this, this has given me power. Whenever I put it in something, it gets a mind of its own, and it'll consume everything. Just you watch. I'll be unstoppable with this power. And Aloe smushes that playing card inside of the bread monster, and it begins to pulsate. The butterflies around you tremble, and a couple of them hit the ground, uh, falling dead. I'm so sorry if insect death was a thing. Um... And the monster is continuing to grow. Kali, I think you need to go first. What would you like to do? Well, okay, you tell me if this is too much to do for like a turn, but it's like, I would like to try and grab onto Amari and then break us both loose from the hold of the doe monster. Thanks, bro. Or... No, that's doable. That's a, I'd say that's a defy danger. That's a defy yeah. danger. Um, yeah, peek your moves as well to make sure there's nothing that would... What about wolf and cub? Once per, sec per session, I may declare my intent to protect someone or something of great value to me. What? You take plus one forward for actions taken to fulfill that promise. Yes, that apply? please. Okay. Absolutely. You could take plus one going. Um, is, uh, how would that look? Like, is there anything that really represents that for you? I mean, I'm picturing this like dough thing, right? It's like we're both kind of, you know, kind of you know, st stuck in it as it sort of like, you know, rides around. And I'm just kind of like, every time I kind of pass or, or get close to like Amari, I'm sort of like reaching out and trying to, you know, grab her. Um, and, and then I, I'd love to like, you know, just kind of like pull her by the collar and then like, you know, retch us both out and like tumble back to the ground. Um, if, if that is possible. Um, Absolutely. Um, hmm. <laughs> Oh, defy danger. That's a very specific one, though. Oh, no, it's not. What would you justify? What do you think? Um, It reads as daring. 
it reads as daring, which says forcefulness. So it's mm -hmm. like this, this feels like, you know, uh, the application of force. Uh, I could possibly make an argument for agility, but, you know, let's say it's nah. daring. Yeah, that feels um, right. So I, I, I get to add plus one to this because I'm applying the move. Okay. You got it. Ah, oh, no. Okay. I'm gonna... That one doesn't <laughs> Okay. So that's 10. Fuck yes. Um, so you you reach over at um, at Amari and just begin to pull. It's like trying to pull your foot out of the mud. Um, it's nothing happens for a couple of moments, and then you hear this horrendous sound, and Amari is yanked out and she hits the ground. And the force of the grab, like the force of her pulling, um, is also going to pull you out at the same time, and you are both now free, Amari. I'd love to say, it's like, as we go crashing to the ground, I'm just kind of like, go! <laughs> I think you've been holding on to that one, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> holding on restraint. to it. Thank you. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the creature roars its displeasure. Amari, uh, what would you like to do? Your friends have arrived. You probably feel a little safer, but you do still hear the cries of somebody else trapped within this yeast. If you don't have anything right now either, we can... No, I'm thinking about... Uh, I didn't mean to build a character that was so manipulative. But you know what? <laughs> I guess... Uh, the, the Dream Mirror playbook... It's the playbook. The one that's all Let's about figuring out what, what someone is about and then being that person for them. You could talk to Aloe. I'm going to. Um, I'm going to look. This is bad. <laughs> this is not good. I want to, as long as we're clear about it, uh, <laughs> I think that's I think that's the safety. Don't do what I'm about to do. It's not okay. good. Yeah. Uh, I'm just playing this character though. Um, I turn to aloe and i imitate the timber of thursday's voice ah. and i say i'm not going to apologize for stopping you and what i want to do is i want to change the way i'm presenting so i can use my move mm. be their dream Ooh, when you change yourself to gain someone's acceptance, affection, or interest, ask if it worked. If so, exchange strings. If you gain three strings uh, this way in a scene, you stagger. Okay, you're not going to stagger. Uh, it does work in getting Aloe to hesitate. Yeah. Um, and that means the doe monster is more or less stationary. Um, there are butterflies still flying around the room that are getting stuck in it and absorbed, but you can't help everyone. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do, because apparently there's a magic card that can bring things to life uh, at hand. So just above game, I'm 100% going after that. But I will um, sort of start to circle Thursday a little bit as I like have a... Um, like a tiny little coffee mug in my hand and I kind of like clink it as I go just to add a little intimidating feature. I'm just <laughs> like, you know, I know that uh, you and Thursday have sort of a thing going on, but um, your ghost boo is a little bit uh, hot headed and you seem to be like the kind of person who wants to be the new kid in town associated with someone a little more direct don't you think take two strings thank you um and again y'all don't forget that in addition to our heartstrings moves um you can point blank use a string uh to influence somebody um you know find out what it'll take to get them to do something um add plus one to your role against them um or subtract a one from my role if you have a string Ooh. against that so way. i'm two to uh just get my head around this i'm two strings away from having a pretty effective play over aloe yes <laughs> okay let's keep the party going that's my move <laughs> all right 
Uh, we had two incredible superhero landings uh, at the front of this conservatory. They landed uh, comfortably, safely, and not covered in what might be 50-year-old bread dough. <laughs> Quinn and Saber, what would you like to do? Which one of us is the starter? <laughs> Who's more combat ready, really? Uh <laughs> I specifically have a thing that says that I am not the first to leave in a combat <laughs> under any cool. circumstances. Uh, so <laughs> let me do a read the room then. Um, because I'm I'm leaning on my obsession of trying to figure this out. And we have we have my hyper focus in front of me, but big. Um, so you'll definitely be able to find some proof there, Sam. Oh, <laughs> I got one, and I'm there done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. it's been a really right fun game, Dee. I really oh, appreciate it. Oh, that was it. good. <laughs> Welcome to the upper crust of role players. Oh, no. I kicked in with brick. I've taken so sense. much of it tonight. <laughs> okay, that's like an eight uh, to rid the room, so I get one. Mm -hmm. Um. How do I go unnoticed here? Because I would like to... Uh, I want to go after the third person. We can fight. We can deal with the dough more directly mm -hmm. without having to, if we don't have to worry about like collateral damage. Brilliant. Um, utilizing your environment in this little conservatory, there are, there's a bunch of trees. There's uh, uh, pillars, benches, a lot of things that you can duck and hide behind because I don't, I, I can't, say how how good the the doe's vision is but al is a little distracted with amari oh yeah no uh al is seeing brad uh <laughs> okay so here's what i'd like to do we have like the sugar crust you know what butterflies love sugar may i use the sweet sense of the bread to create like a very anime like butterfly camouflage to like Yes. Screen uh, my path over to the bread. Yeah, no, that is using an item that you already have. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Um, monarch butterflies, uh, blue butterflies, silver butterflies. I don't know any other butterfly names. They all congregate in this beautiful moving wall to keep you camouflaged as you sidle your way over to uh, big bread. Butter, butterflies. <laughs> uh, Quinn, you're not going first, so you are good. You don't yeah. get that penalty. I think it's combat first, so I'm not going to do a move that is combat based. Um, That's really funny. You're right. Oh my God. I will have to, I think it's like I have to mark a condition if I attempt violence before anyone else in the party. Mm hmm. Um, okay, so what? I want to do, and I don't know if this is particularly, so I have a thing called search engine optimization, um, and I gain additional questions from a specific list when I attempt to figure out a person. So I would like to attempt to figure out Ello. I love that. All right. So what do you roll for that? that? Probably wit. Let me double check. That makes sense. See, would, you're uh, actually getting to the root of the problem with Allah. It's wit. <laughs> it is wit. Okay. I don't, I, don't, I just, it wouldn't matter if either of those, but I do have a plus one forward, which I would to use. Yes. Um, now is the time. Yes. I was so like, we'll how see. is root a bread pun? And then. <laughs> Allah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we have two different ones here. <laughs> there's, there's so much to work with. <laughs> Same so, works on multiple levels. Okay, <laughs> multiple planes. Well, both like... have flour. Mm-hmm. I got. You go. Someone's got it. You got to slide that one in there somewhere. Um, that's an eight with my plus one forward. It's the flower okay. friendship. Uh, nine. So it's still a mixed success. Oh, no, um, eight, eight. It was seven plus eight. Oh, or sorry, you. plus one to eight. Yes. Okay, so mixed success. Um, you may ask two questions, uh, and Aloe can ask you one back. Okay. So, um, and you also get an additional list? question, an additional, question, additional question because from my list, yeah. Aww. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, sorry, I've, I've had too many documents open. 
Where are you? Um, I also have it in the Discord. Oh, it's in the Discord, in our... too. Okay. I forgot. Yeah. You, you made this all easy for us. Um, okay. So I get two questions and then mm -hmm. my one. Okay. What does Aloe hope to get from this action she is taking? This bread dough monster. <laughs> The scene freezes. Um, the butterflies stop fl fl uh, fluttering. Um, Saber is frozen in place. And we see Alo, And her eyes are kind of shifting back and forth as we get the internal monologue. And she wants to be popular. She came from Neo Diamond City, where, well, they can't talk about what happens there. She was the shit. An aloe plant, aloe vera. And she comes here and the only friend for Rend that she can make is a goth ghost who has temper tantrums. So aloe just has, she really just wants popularity and acceptance. Okay. And my second one would be... How would Aloe feel if we invited her to have lunch or dinner in the commons with us? Probably thrilled. There's okay. like a little snippet where we see like um, her inner monologue is visualized by the little chibi version of her um, doing cute little faces. And there's a scene where she imagines like... If only, if only I could sit at a table with more than one friend. <laughs> All Thursday ever tells me is how she died. I know. Okay, cool. Basically, I wanted to know if we, if like we were enough, for, like, or if it was like something higher. Cool. Hey, you and are then, always enough. No, <gasps> that's why I was trying to find out with her. She might have different ideas. Um, and then from my list, I get one additional. Oh my gosh, these are oh, so wild. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to think about what I want to ask you as yeah, well. Yes, so you get one back to me. Um, oh my God, these are really intense. Um, how? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I think. It's... How do you fit into the world around you? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, this um, these list list. I did not look through them very yeah, thoroughly, <laughs> and so that, we're gonna do that one because the other two are uh, very dark. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, I think it's her. Her fit is complicated. She's not even uh, a full person, and well, there's no normal person anymore. There's no such thing. She still doesn't feel like she quite fits in, especially in the city. People still call her the international student. She never got rid of that title. And in this moment, she wonders to Quinn, how, how would you feel if you never were able to make more than one friend? How would you feel if you tried so hard in class only to be constantly bested by the best bread maker, Saber, and then insulted? by his friend while just wanting to be friends, especially with the one that probably craves violence. It was a loaded question. So many questions. One big question with a lot of facets. Um, well, Quinn um, doesn't know entirely, cannot, fully relate to most people, but this very specific situation she does not relate to. Um, but she does get what it feels like to be, feel outsidery and different because she struggles a lot to relate to the organic people around her. So it's not the same, but she kind of gets it. I really love that. And the scene Re um, resumes and you know the butterflies start to move again and we focus on Kali you saved Amari but what would you like to do now can I tell there's still like another person somewhere inside this bread thing right mm -hmm. you all can hear I the muffled screams 
can I, can I tell where this person is? Uh, towards like the butt of the bread. All right, then I, I, you know, draw my sword and I, you know, time to slice the bread. And I want to see if I can cut the other person out of the dough. Yeah. Um, this might finally be our first fight roll, um, <laughs> which I really appreciate. Again, this game, it's we only have one move to do fighting. Like, it's not meant for fighting, but it is meant for fighting. Um, also, Saber, do you have anything special other than me having you roll fight? By Saber, do you mean Callie? Whoops, I meant Callie. Okay, Thank just you. Checking. My brain's thinking swords now. And I mean, your name was look. Like, relatable really sharp yeah sometimes i'm just sitting there things arts <laughs> um uh, doesn't look like it i don't see anything i could think i could use i'm you oh, know that's okay unless i'm missing something but no but afterwards you're depending on how you do going forward uh your juggernaut move might come into play so go ahead and roll me a daring to fight Come on, Callie. Nine. Mm. That's good. All right. So um, I'm going to snip something and put it in our uh, Discord. Fighting in PBTA is a very back and forth thing. Uh, usually if, a, if you got a perfect success, um, you would just be doing the damage. But when it is a mixed success, it's something that kind of uh, ping pongs back and forth. And it's going to be really fascinating. Uh, so as soon as my Discord cooperates, uh, you get to pick two and I get to pick one. Um, for the audience, you can flirt with or provoke your opponent and gain a string on them. Something Amari is fantastic at. Um, you. you can uh, do violence with, uh, oh yeah, commit violence or uh, say mean things to inflict a condition. You can create an opportunity for an ally um, through prowess or distraction or take an object from your opponent or seize a superior position. You who, get who two counts? of these. Yeah, who counts as my opponent here? The bread monster or the bread. ally? Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to... First, I'm going to try and create an opportunity for an ally uh, through prowess or distraction. Mm, what does um, that look like? Um, I'm, I'm gonna see. You know, I'm gonna sort of like start backing across the room and seeing if I can get like the bread monster to like focus all its attention on me, putting all of my allies behind it, so that if they want to attack or or try and cut the person out, they can now come from behind. Um, mm -hmm. uh, assuming that it has a back. Um, Perfect. Do you say and anything to kind of get its attention? Or are you just kind of like waving your sword like over here? Yeah, at first I just start like waving my sword and being like, hey, hey, over here. And then um, and then I'm going to flirt with uh, flirt, uh, flirt with my um, opponent um, and gain a string on them. Uh, yes. So I'm, I'm just going to be, you know, um, uh, hey, uh, have anyone ever told you you're pretty cute for a a, a, a doe monster? Um, you oh. know, I, really, I uh, y y you know, um, I, you know, mm. you, know you, you are really definitely more of the wheat than the chaff. I can I can sort of tell, um, uh, you know, that uh, you're not like other doe monsters. Um, mm. Sam, are you gonna go for it, or should I? <laughs> Please. I would loaf for you too. I, I I mean, you know, it's pretty obvious that Rick's just buttering up the bread, so <laughs> we're all going to hell for this game. Okay. We are! <laughs> <laughs> the bread monster is interested. Um it's kind of been hinted that this creature has been locked up for 50 years and was only recently um let loose for some uh, unknown reason. And now roaming the hallway, stinky and unloved, controlled by Allah with no respect, you offer it kindness and compliments? Um, I get to react 
And I think that this bread monster is going to flirt back. Um, it's very much like, uh, you know, like when they kind of like blush and like uh, it, a toe appears in the bread. It's like, oh, no, no. Has anyone ever told you you smell like sugar bread? Oh. <laughs> and uh, that's its turn. It is very focused now. Uh, Amari, I believe you were next. Uh, I'm going to take a page out of Rick's book, and I am going to... I'm not privy to the information that Quinn got, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. That's okay. Uh, it's all very internal. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. What I'm going to do it's is also I'm... anime and let's be real. Continuity is a thing that is hinted, but never followed through. True. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's very true. Um, I am, uh, going to flirt as a, a fight move. Before I was kind of doing some recon, gathering some strings. <laughs> uh, but uh, watching uh, Callie uh, flirt you with the bread. You should entice. Entice. Because you can get a string um, mm -hmm. if you are successful on that roll. And it also might work a little bit better to what you want to do. You probably want to convince her to not commit violence? Yeah. yeah um, whatever you would like. I, ooh, you know what? Here's how I can dress this up. Mm -hmm. um, and then enticing will be end up being a heart roll, is that right? Yeah, it's when you appeal to someone's physical or emotional sensibilities. Um, versus you know, incapacitating them with right. compliments. Um, Okay, great. I can do that. Uh, Aloe, you know, I, I never really noticed until now just how lush your leaves are. In fact, you know, I think... What? Honestly, you're a bit wasted when it comes to being, like, the new kid at school. I think that the whole... I don't think you should be the new kid in school. I think you should be the new kid in the entire city would you maybe want to like hang out at the cafe where i work as a barista it's not just students that come through it's everyone and i think everyone will see how cool you are and i think you're going to be really popular everywhere i know you can't talk about your old city but here i think you'll be talked about in your new city what uh, roll me a heart, because this can go so many ways. Come on, big money. Oh, you love to see it. That's going to be, uh, let me double check. I believe I have a plus one to heart. Somebody, yeah, I think. I do. Saber still has a plus one. Got a little you 12 there one. then, B. What can you do with hey! a 12? Hey! All right. Um, so you get a string on a good old aloe vera, and I get to choose one. So get flustered and awkward, promise something they think you want, or give in to desire. Um, I don't see how flustered and awkward desire. and giving in isn't the same. Right. Um, what? You, uh, wait, you think my, my, my leaves are, I spritz them with water every day. Um, you were gonna, cath yeah, the, the apron, the whole, it's, it's a little different than when I saw you in class, but... This is a, this is a good look. Oh, yeah, I'm just noticing you brought all your friends with you. Is that because we all want to go hang out? Wait, am I, am I cool? Oh no, I'm going to be, I'm so manipulative. I move a little bit of my curly coffee colored hair away from my face. Uh, so I can make eye contact. Aloe vera's green being with my emerald green eyes. And I uh, answer Aloe's question. The reason that my friends are here is because, I don't know, I thought it might be cool to be seen with you, actually. Uh, yeah, she gives in. 
I want everyone to know I feel so bad about this. Like I did I don't do this in real life. I want to be explicitly clear about this. I think somebody will be able to make this better, so it's it's okay. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, great. So I've got a string and, uh, now that breaks you. what is that? Tell me about that. Pardon? That you have three strings on somebody. That yes. means what? Oh, for me specifically? You? Mm -hmm, that's a something for you. Oh, let me check. I thought, uh, oh, 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 You're my oh. mirror one, right? Single session. Advance every three XP instead of every five. No, that's different strings. Come on. <laughs> Uh, love interest, no. No, maybe not. Okay. Person, no strings. Yep. That is a okay. Okay. We'll keep reading it. It's fine. All right. I got one Saber. more flirt in me. <laughs> <laughs> the scene, everything's kind of been not taken care of per se, but the enemy has been distracted and nobody's being hurt. In fact, this whole fiasco seems a little bit more tame than Star had anticipated. What would you like to do? Well, now that I have snuck up closer to the mm -hmm. dough from behind my butterfly screen, uh, with Callie having angled the person we need to rescue um, toward us, I'd like to use and 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 flirting with the bread. And you know how you get that like heat in your cheeks, that flush. I'd like to use my sun hands to intensify that because when you cook bread, you know how the crust kind of cracks and opens. Uh huh. Perhaps revealing that is so cool. The person we want to get. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it feels like a spirit role because it's like a metaphysical part. Like I'm using the special mm -hmm. ability thing. Uh, Absolutely. But, um, and I want to spend my plus one forward. Yes, perfect. Remembering things. Um, just double checking your moves. No, that is. Yeah, right. no, yeah. neither of them have procced. <laughs> um, do you want this to be a defy danger or a fight? My heart um, says defy danger. Um. Wherever your heart says, I will roll. Um, it's real. It, I'm really using like you can determine how dangerous the situation is right now based on how you were describing it. But I just know like use use special dough bread. The thing the thing I've got is bread. The way I can help people is knowing how to do stuff. And right now, I know how to bake, and this is dough. Mm -hmm. and I'm it might go against the grain of what our what our suit is supposed to do, but like it's in the heart of the cards. Yes. Oh my god. All right. Daring Grace Heart, Twit, or Spirit. We decided Spirit. Go ahead and give me that roll. All right. Okay, that's a six and a four. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, that'll get us over. And then the plus one forward, and then the plus one spirit. Oh my goodness. What what does this look like as you rescue? I forgot their name. Hold on. Go ahead and start to describe it while I get this NPC. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether it was Puck or Thursday or Dr. Sloth or... Oh, it's Puck. I thought it might... Mm -hmm. That's so fucked up. <laughs> oh, baby. They were just going to, like, soccer practice. Oh, my sweet jock. <laughs> what does uh, this rescue look like? So there is... The little red rising from the cheek, from like the cheeks of the bread where Callie is blushing, blush monstering mm -hmm. the dough. And so, kind of just like a Kistigel, um, like creatures coming up and being like, sha la 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 la. Uh, <laughs> Saber comes up to just heat up the situation and the bread. And so everything around the bread starts to glow. We get the little rising and the dough glows golden. Mm -hmm. 
and and starts to crust and and really develop, right? Because like they weren't mm-hmm. fully baked, and so we're we're. Well, I oh my god, I want something else. You know, I have demands of you. Please. Can you choose one on your uh, sun hand baking list to tell me what does this portion of our bread monster become? Oh. Hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, as this bread starts to rise, uh, first we see the bald head of Puck, dark skin, and it's all like steam is rising off of it. It's glistening like when you uh, egg brush some bread and it comes out for the first time. It's beautiful. And then the rest of them starts to emerge and they start to cough. <laughs> what? I, th- I think I'm... And as this person is uh, baked... They come out smelling amazing, glistening. It's like their clothes were like well pressed, and they just look uh, just absolutely risen. They might even have some glow to them. I'm going with illuminated crust causes oh those who eat it to glow for a few hours because we're like it's the whole glow up that Kelly mm. is providing, and like they started glowing, the hands are glowing, the bread is glowing, probably the 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 sweet jock who's inside the bread mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. had had a shine i think you said and so they glow this lovely bread puck stands up to their full height and there's something like six four lean build um and just like again that fresh bread smell and they look at you saber uh th- thank you for saving my life if uh you ever need uh need some help with sports i got you i would love that yeah that's that's funny because i was trapped in bread i uh i think i'm gonna go back to class uh yeah i had a test about bread i'm gonna think about my day (laughs) and oblivious to the rest of the scene uh Puck leaves. Quinn. I think that went really well. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, goodness. Actually, sorry, right before we go to Quinn, um, Saber. That's I'm good. That's all I wanted. (laughs) Proofs of heart and blade. When you become smitten with someone, say why and give them a string and answer this question. What unwise thing do you think you could do to impress them? Uh, sports. <laughs> I think I, when you first described Puck, my, my first thought was Saber absolutely had a like three week attempt at like badminton or like some weird, like some out sport. Like they were not, they're not a, he's not a flag football. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's the culture. We're playing Thirsty Sword Love. Field hockey. The answer <laughs> is field hockey. Or rugby. <laughs> or rugby or softball or soccer. Oh, oh. Dang. Dang. Or look, we make the sports game. The sports are for lesbians. I think that's all we need that to know here. Yeah. That is completely 100% yeah. accurate. And yeah. uh, on behalf of all beach volleyball, uh, audiences we appreciate it uh so the answer is play sports um Mm -hmm. and the reason is like they're say he's all about impressing people that's the son and baker like trying so hard to do things and like pup just acknowledged that he had that that saber helped and that's really important that that's his love language that acknowledgement and so like oh my god when the when yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Quinn, you get to witness and probably hear most of that. Um, to the left, you still see uh, Callie kind of romancing the bread. And the bread has been pretty unaware of its buns that have now been baked just a little bit. What would you like to do? 
Amari is socializing with Aloe. Aloe looks smitten. <laughs> I think she just like picks it. It's just like, well, that everybody, okay, we're all accounted for. Nobody is in eminent danger. I think she's just like, um, is there like, um, I'm trying to have to start again, too many docs. Like, uh, I don't have a particular move or anything, but something just like lay of the land. Like, are we miss? Is there anything that we're missing? Like, is that kind of a, oh, like, yeah, a um, thing? I'm, uh, it's be... not a danger move. Where are my other ones? Uh, not to buy disaster. No, just ask me. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know if it was, a, if it was a, you could figure out a person. Yeah. I did that with aloe. You can influence, um, entice, offer emotional support. Um, if it helps at all. Um, so the situation, actually, here's what I should give you. Um, can I have you roll? Interesting. Um, can I have you roll with spirit? We're going to call on a toxic power. Okay. Um, so parlaying with a toxic power in this instance is the magical card that has somehow found its way into Aloe's hand. Um, and I need you to roll spirit. And this might provide a little bit more information. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, that's uh, that's another 10. Nice. Um, so it'll answer the questions and grant you plus one four to act on the information. Uh, where are the questions? Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking for them too. I have toxic power. Call on toxic power. Oh, it doesn't have it in here. All right. Um, we're going to absolutely <laughs> this a little bit. I don't cool. know if it's just like my document or... Yeah, I have. It just says answer the questions, but there's no questions. <laughs> no. So take that plus one going forward. Well, and Quinn, you survey the scene. And as I said, things have started to settle. Um, Saber's kind of feeling a little giddy. Callie's distracted with the bread monster. Amari is socializing with Aloe. The butterflies are calming down. It seems like the humidity of the room feels good. And then there's a pulse. It's like the world freezes for a second and there's this wave of sound that radiates from out of that card and it ripples the bread monster. Uh, Callie, you, you see this once charming beast kind of twitch a little bit and it's once cute features that have molded with the slightly unrisen bread begin to crust over and this beast begins to cook. The card that was placed in its side radiates heat and this monster cooks into a giant bread golem. Allo looks over. Ah! Oh no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that at all. And it strikes at you, Callie. Uh, let's roll some fight. Okay. And um, yeah. Quinn, I will still give you a moment. I promise. Um, so that's daring? That is daring. Um, or grace, if you think uh, you'd be graceful in your like, really cool armor. Because like... I believe. Maybe like try and like roll out of the way or something, you know, like one of these bipedal yes. rolls. Or so it's like, yeah, I'm probably like standing there, like, you know, doing my flirting thing with the monster. It's like at this point, I'm like, you know, I'm showing off my guns and, you know, and then all of a sudden, like all cooks up and swipes at me and I'm just like, blah! And I just like sort of dive across like the, the room. Um, and I get a seven. <laughs> okay, no, that's okay. So we're going to choose two, and your opponent is going to choose one. Um, because the monster fought, uh, went to hit you first, it is going to go first. And it is going to attack you through violence to inflict a condition, and it is going to inflict the condition insecure. Um, your flirting endeavors were, like, really good until they weren't, and that's really making you second-guess yourself. Are your muscles not defined enough? For the bread. That's a bummer. 
So go ahead and pick two. Okay, where uh, two? Uh, am I picking from? Island, you can flirt. You can create opportunities. Oh, this is the same fight. You choices? got it. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, you can also take an object or seize a superior position. I feel like you know, given I am the bloody, um, it can, inflicting a condition through violence seems like one of the things I definitely do. Um, and, you have uh, a condition thing too. Let me double check it. Um, it was like your your juggernaut. Yes, I'm the juggernaut, love. When you mark your first condition during a physical conflict, you may upgrade your next fight roll from a downbeat to a mixed beat. So basically automatic success the next time you fight. Um, but you also have to answer one of these questions. Um, so that just is going to happen because you've now been hurt, but you can still uh, react accordingly. Okay, so I'm answering one of these questions now? Not yet. Next time. Oh, next time. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. Right? All right. Yeah, because I yeah, just... Yeah, your next I, I fight a, roll. I did a grace roll, right? So it was like... Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I still need to... Um, what I still do you need to do? choose wanna... two of these, right? You got so it. So I'm going to try and inflict a condition through violence. Mm -hmm. um, uh, plus, don't I, I have a string on the bread monster, right? Because my flirting was successful last time. Yes! Week. Um, and, uh, uh, you can use that to add a plus one to your roll. Okay, yeah, I will definitely do that. You um, can give me a negative one. Um, uh, you can ask I'll, I'll me questions. A, yeah. I'll add a plus one to my, my, my attempt to inflict a condition through violence. Um, that is a seven. Okay. Again. Um, but this is now I can add on the juggernaut love and, and upgrade that to an automatic success, right? I see what you're doing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So um, how we're going to resolve this is I think you effectively destroy this bread monster. You are, it was in like an auto crit, you know? What does that look like? Um, I probably like whirl my sword, you know, almost like a fan, like super fast and just kind of slice and dice it like a loaf of bread and then into breadcrumbs. Um, and, uh, and, and, and then sort of stand over the crumbs, like, <sighs> like, you know, just exhausted and brooding from the attack. Um, and now I have to answer one of these questions. Yes. Okay, let's see. How does this conflict add to your reputation? You see fear in your enemy's eyes. How does it make you feel to strike against your opponent? You leave something else open. Wasn't you feel invincible? What reminds you that you're painfully mortal? Okay, yeah. Um, after cutting through that uh, bread monster, I do feel totally invincible. And then I look down at one of the little pieces of bread on the floor, and it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, that murderous panda that I once had to fight. Uh, who who did so much damage to me, not just physically but emotionally? Um, because I, I can't I can't even tell the story. It's just too much. Um, and just just say wow. it was a scary panda, and and and, it, and and even just merely thinking of it reminds me that I am painfully mortal. There is a moment where the breadcrumbs settle. And not a single butterfly or plant was harmed in that slicing barrage. Callie's skill is such that their precision is unmatched. But as that mortality starts to sink into you, Allo um, looks, or sorry, points loudly at a card that stands outside of the uh, breadcrumb pile. Look, that's, that's the card. And then before anybody can grab it or react, Star appears as if materialized out of nowhere, jumps into the pile of bread and eats the card. Mm, 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 mm. That's one way to stop evil, wouldn't you say? Star, did you just eat the card? Well, of course, it's my job to stop this stuff out. Um, and that'll 
destroy the card and its effects? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, that's wonderful. Thank you very much for doing that, Star. You kids should get back to class. Your bread exam is almost over. <sighs> You're right, and we have to go up 50 flights of uh, stories. 17? Is it 17? Yeah, we, we, went, we went down to... Uh, it, was, uh, it was 30 floor. Floor 30. You know, I actually I lost count because um, two of you did a really great landing. I got pulled out the window did, yeah. while I was trying to grind down on my scissors. <laughs> I had an hour to try to get over that, Omar. <laughs> I had an hour to recompose myself, and it's done now. All <laughs> that work is done. It's useless. Just a reminder, Saber, what happened is I I, uh, I launched some, uh, I got a bag of beans out of my pocket and I cut them open and I threw them and I ground them. They went through a border filter. I tamped them down. I, I used uh, the correct water temperature because I used a PID. And then I extracted the espresso. I threw the espresso and I stepped through the espresso. And uh, that was my transformation. And then I stepped on my scissors. Uh, it didn't go nowhere. I got stuck in one place and I got pulled out the window just in case you forgot, Saber. and change back so nobody knows who you are. Oh, yeah, of course. Alla, will you keep our secret? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Will, will you invite me to the cool table at lunch? There's a cool table? It's you. <sighs> oh. Only on one condition. Hmm, yeah. <sighs> and Saber moves up with the last of their poor, sad, like now kind of bashed, smashed sugar loaf panda bread. You smelled it, but you never tried it. Oh, yes, please. But this is your project. Uh, we, I don't want you to fail. <sighs> I look to Callie. I think we got this. And, and, I, and I look back to Saber and I'm like, hey, those were some nice moves. Thanks. You sure know how to rise to the occasion. Mm. All right. I was impressed, but now I don't know. <laughs> Quinn is standing next to him. He's like, do you think we can split our dough three ways? I bet I could. We have a, there's the, the, wow. The thing that weighs baking things a the scale? scale we have a scale i could probably split it three ways we could have all three very tiny bread um uh, my understanding from uh dr sloth was that uh uh dr sloth just wants to see them perfectly made i don't think there was any particular emphasis on size it was just the science it was the ratio of it as long as we portray that we or relay at least that we understand the science of it well Ooh. we got the science down I think we just need some some heart, some saber touch on the on the the you know because they know bread. Group project, and I think they bust in. Be uh, he busts in between and <laughs> uh, gets both of them. Ooh. Yes, let's go. And with and as they walk away, the energy. Yeah. They move it all. You know Quinn is like, you are you okay? You have to taste it. Then I don't know how I did. And they, just, <laughs> they go upstairs. <laughs> And there's a small montage to kind of close this out. Uh, the five of you uh, all share a table. Uh, what was the ghost Thursday? Um, mm -hmm. Has made new friends already. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's for another episode. Um, I put a hand on Aloe's shoulder really quick. Cause that's a uh, pretty, that's a pretty dramatic turn of events. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. We get a picture of, like, you turning Aloe's back to Thursday, and then we see Saber kind of putting all of the ingredients into a bowl, Quinn mixing it, like, and you, you see numbers around them as they are counting the exact amount of times to turn the ladle. Uh, Callie is given uh, an option to cut the bread as soon as it's done. She does so with the most direct and flourishy of graceful swipes. And the bread splits in two in front of Dr. Sloth. Her little claws go up to her face in slow motion and her eyes get wide with joy. And you see plastered over the screen, a hundred percent. And that's the end of the episode. 
Ah, we got to make good bread. I don't know how I survived that with y'all. <laughs> that was that great. That was an entire experience. Um, <laughs> and and Ula's and Lori. You realize Lori the Lorgen saw Star, right? Yep. Yep. That, feels that so was very intentional. Mm -hmm. That it's, oh, that. Oh. <laughs> when, when the dog sees the dog and it's like. <laughs> but it's Lorgen in a hamster with power ring a projector that's showing the show. I just start to just make a picture like every time Star came up, Lori Lori just kind of like ran faster trying to get to the screen. You know? Oh my god, Lori. Not to like uh... over world build, but can I just say once the episode concludes, uh Vion does whisper uh to Amira just really quietly so the kids don't hear it. Um I I, I hold that the sub is much better than the dub. <laughs> and uh, Amir is like, ah, either way, this has always been one of my favorite episodes, although I always felt it could have used more bread pun puns. <laughs> you think it could have used more bread puns? <laughs> yeah, you know, they should have just went for it, but uh, I don't know. I think that You know, the episode with all the spaghetti puns? Like that one. Oh, well, that was my favorite. They really, um... Nope, I got nothing. <laughs> oh, come on. It would be impossible to pet talk ah! that. <laughs> Fast, let's, uh... Daddy. Oh, wait, actually. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and uh, as, uh, uh, as as the episode's over, um, uh, the kids cheer, and uh, Ulez and Amira and Vion uh, walk out, um, uh, say goodbye to everybody, and uh, they, they take the uh, subway ride home, um, uh, uh, arguing over um, what was the best season and the best episode, and, and, and which also of the characters might dub. win in the fight. Yeah, sub versus dub, and you know, just like all the traditional uh, fan stuff, and uh, B... That was freaking amazing. Just <laughs> thank you, B. Uh, thank you. I was given the reins to just run something for fun, and that is what I excel at. So <laughs> thank you for letting me just be silly. Excel you hell, you did. Yeah. You're a hell of a GM or a, a BM. If you, <laughs> no, I think a bowel movement, but I know your heart was there. So that, <laughs> oh, really yeah, that's wow. No, I was definitely not thinking that, but. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, no, I, I take that back. For sure. um, so let's go around the table and uh, tell the people where uh, they can find you all, uh, starting with our incredible uh, GM, <laughs> B Zelda. Hello, all. I have been your non-binary busy bee. I am a podcaster. I host Anime Attaché. If you're into anime, I am a streamer. I sometimes GM. Uh, so you definitely want to follow me to figure out when I do GM because you know the game is going to be ridiculous. Or I'll just TPK the whole party. Hey, Sam. Um, otherwise, I am the community manager for D&D &D Adventures League. And uh... <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you for letting me live my bread, my panda bread dreams. Thank you for taking us into those panda bird dreams. <laughs> um, uh, Sam DeLev. Uh, hello, Sam DeLev. I have been your Saber Sanderson, always ready for action. And you can find me doing terrible things to the English language throughout the Twitcher net, the schedule for which is on twitch.tv slash DeLevely, D-E-L-E-V-E-L-Y, as well as all of my specials and one-offs announced on Twitter at Tchaikovsky, C-H-A-I-K-O-B. SKY. Uh, the English language knows what it did. It deserved it. Yeah, you just know that Saber was a, a key character in that spaghetti episode. Um, uh, Omar Najam. Hey, everybody. I'm Omar Najam. Uh, you can find me at Omar Najam on Twitter. And uh, you can also find me uh, Tuesdays uh, on the show Bane's Break um, over at Pixel Circus. If you enjoyed uh, the fl uh, fl flirtatious characteristics of tonight's adventures, uh, I don't want to spoil anything per se, but my character is, uh, there's a lot more of that uh, that I do uh, over on Tuesdays uh, if you want to see how a little cat boy um, gets involved in a relationship and forms feelings and all that stuff is happening. But also there's like a disease everywhere and it's a very scary show. So, you know, just a mix of both. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think if there's anything. Hey, uh, stay hydrated and get, get sleep. Uh, it's very important. 
<laughs> as your, I'm learning. Is your cat boy, uh, is he also into coffee? Because I've noticed that kind of like all Omars across the mm -hmm. multiverse are, yeah. are coffee drinkers. Um, have I, really quick question, have I done that outside of Power Play stuff? I Because I, um, I, I think that's siloed to this channel mostly. I don't know. I'd have to play with you more often in more games to be sure. And you couldn't tell on Tempting Fate because I never me. let you do anything but say Fast and the Furious titles. So, <laughs> uh, dream. That's true. That's a fact. Your little old lady <laughs> loved, uh, loved coffee as well, I'm pretty sure. So I think I think there's something. Yeah, no one's terribly pressed about it, but you make Ooh. lots of coffee. <laughs> this is the <just laughs> second time that Sage and I have hung out in the game a lot. Okay, that makes sense. Anyway, uh, that's me. <laughs> Caitlin Bruder. Hi, I'm Caitlin Bruder. I am the resident sword lesbian uh, here on Power Play. And I will continue to be so. Um, I do stuff and things. Follow me on Twitter at KKAMABR, and I'll talk about those things. There's stuff coming that I can't talk about yet. So just, uh, you'll see it eventually. Your That's chill sword vibe is unrivaled. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love, I haven't, I haven't streamed on my own channel in a million years. And I used to just like, we would just pull the sword out all the time. And I would just like hold it while I was like drawing or like playing games. Uh, just I'm like I haven't had a chance to just like well. have a sword on stream, so this was delightful. Thank you, V. <laughs> Heck yes. And uh, I'm Rick Bud. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at uh, rbud913, or you can follow the show at Powerplay RPG. Um, I will be back here next week with these four people for the the season six premiere of Powerplay. The 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 season premiere of the final season. Um, it. it it gets real serious from here on out. Uh, so uh, tune in for that. Um, and uh, on, on that, the theater goes dark. And we are in Meldon, uh, the neighborhood known as The Vault in Baronsdale. It is September 28th, 2021. It's night. Uh, and we are in the lobby of a seedy rundown motel uh, that a blinking sign identifies as the Cerulean Motel. Uh, a man enters. He's roughly 35, wearing jeans and a flannel shirt, dark rings of exhaustion under his eyes. If I had to cast him, I would say he's uh, Mark Dupless. And uh, he walks toward uh, the check-in desk. And the clerk behind the desk, who I will say is uh, Lorraine Toussaint, um, is watching PR1. And uh, they're showing clips of Benny, Vion, Cadrax, and Ulez battling the Alpha Combine in Bray Square along with the supervillain team. And uh, then the clerk sees this man coming and she turns to him and says, checking in or checking out. And the man gazes at the TV and seems mesmerized by the clips of the battle. So the clerk says, hello. And he finally turns to her and says, uh, checking in. And she punches a few keys on a computer in front of her and says, name. And he furrows his brow and says, do I need a name? I mean, can I like check in without giving my name? And she says, you need to give a name, sir. And he says, uh, okay, uh, S Smith, John Smith. And she rolls her eyes and she's like, I need to see your driver's license, Mr. Smith. And clearly troubled by that, he says, uh, what if I paid you? Not the motel, like you. Could you pretend you saw my license for like $100? And she shakes her head and kind of lets out a long breath. And then she says, 300 And he pulls a wad of cash from his pocket and starts counting bills out for her. And she slides a room key across the desk and says, uh, enjoy your stay, Mr. Smith. And uh, he takes the key and then looks back at the TV set, which is still showing the battle in Bray Square. And he nods at the clerk and he says, thanks, I'll try. And as he heads off to his room, we cut to black. Thanks for playing with us. See you next week.